Can you hear me now? Can you? Fantastic. And I can hear you. Look at that. I can hear you and everything. <laughs> I, I, uh, I got a lot of echo here. We'll turn that down a little bit then. I wasn't sure if you were attacking me or balance that. Oh, I'm just kind of talking, just to kind of yeah, just to kind of get an idea of what everything sounds like here, because this gets rammed in there, and then the buttons all change a little bit. So, whoa, let's back that up just a touch too. How's yeah. that sound? Yeah. Is that a little bit better? A lot better. Doesn't there sound like go. there's a basketball game or something in the background now. Right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, and we should be able to make that work now. Yeah, I think. Holy I, I can tolerate. What's ever in the background now?
The following is a presentation of WCMP Sports, local sports. That's the 25, to the 20, to the 15, he's going to high step into the end zone, touchdown! Here wide receivers split each side. He's still going into the end zone. East Central Minnesota, the action starts now. To bring you the call, here's Andy Beckstrom. Welcome in sports fans, Andy Beckstrom on hand here at the Pine City Civic Center, joined with Lawrence Luzacic for the call of tonight's matchup as the Pine City Area Dragons play host to the Monticello Moose as we are underway here in Pine City. Oscar well, Gavalo yeah, help is here to keep you feeling your best Dragons so you can enjoy the all end, the things you love best. You can count Logan on us for your Atlantic. eye exams, mental health and, uh, services, Lauren, uh, rehabilitation, wellness right exams, bat, uh, urgent Oscar care, Gavalo, and much more at Wellia Health. Our goal is to help you really live yeah, life well. Let Wellia Health help you get back to your best. Give us a call. Eric Rook, who's the other goaltender with the Dragon squad, but Oscar's a very solid, very quick uh, reflexes, uh, very uh, experienced goaltender for the Dragons here tonight. I remember Colin is uh, first game, a, uh, a start and kind of a last second start. Uh, the starter at the time was ill and he got kind of thrust into action and uh, kind of a wide-eyed freshman but played tremendously and I believe, he, if I remember correctly, he got the shutout that night as well. It's been nothing but uh, good things for him since then. Yeah, and it's good to have that senior leadership in, the, in between the pipes there. So. Puck loose out in front of him. Moose trying to hold the puck in the zone. Moose, a perennial contender. Now we're going to get a penalty going into the corner. I think it's going to go against Hunter Haug in the corner. Just kind of tried to finish a check against Brandon Ziegelmeyer, but uh, you're not allowed to do that when you go up against the boards. No, no I was just going to say here, for uh, Pine to, to win this game, they got to have a clean game and stay out of the box because this Monticello team... Uh, if history repeats itself, they can skate pretty good and they can handle the puck pretty good and they've always had pretty good special teams. So, uh, the test different the Dragons off, this, off the bat here right now. So the first power play of the game goes to the Moose. Puck will come over to the near side for Simon. He sets up in the circle, goes underneath. Thompson back for Simon, now quickly up top, circling the puck around Nelson. Quick shot on the far side. I think that may have hit the pipe as it came through. Tough shot by Brody Mick. Puck pinned up against the far boards. Trying to hold that one there is McCall Leisure. As the puck finally comes loose, it'll come out down the length of the ice. Moose will have to come back into their own end to be able to get it. 30 seconds gone by in the Moose power play. If you're tuned in on 100.9 WCMP, the Moose moving from left to right here on your radio dial. Set up in the west end of the arena here at the Pine City Cervix Center. Centering feed came out in front, but there was nobody there. There was a couple of red shirts, but they were tied up on the play, including uh, Landon Sherber as the puck heads the other direction. Pine City will be attacking the entrance end of the arena on the east end of the arena, closer to Highway 61 as you drive by. Coming through the neutral zone from left to right is gonna be Roman Thompson. Thompson sets up near side, laid it back, got it right back down underneath. Puck knocked away by the Dragons, flipped up and sort of out of play, but out of play into the box, so we're going to move that face off. Pine City's been doing a real nice job of kind of boxing out Monticello here on this power play, not giving him really any opportunities, so if they can keep that up to, to the next uh, 30 seconds or so, get back to full strength, we can go back to five on five and see what they can go even up. Mentioned uh, at the beginning of the power play, Ponticello a perennial contender in Section 5A play. So this is also a section game, which it is early in the season, but they all count towards the end of the year as uh, you try to be able to get a decent seed and maybe have a home game in a uh, section that uh, I don't want to say is completely wide open, but does have a chance. Now the puck turned over. It's going to be brought back by Bross. Bross from a call, Leisure. Back for Braz out in front, and it was played with a high stick momentarily, but a good opportunity shorthanded by the Dragons, as now we're back to even strength, and the Moose 0 for 1. Yeah, the 0 for 1 on the, on the power play, and Pine City really had the only scoring opportunity on that, that uh, man advantage for 
Monticello. So and good signs for Pine City there. And you mentioned that they got to play a clean game. That's a good sign if they do end up getting a couple of penalties, how they're able to work that power play unit or that power penalty kill unit, I should say. You mentioned, you know, a section team there. They're also a conference team. Pine City did drop one to Cambridge here last week, so they don't want to fall 2-0 and in the conference either. Puck will come back deep into the Dragon zone. Kirby, one of the captains, will flip it back out to the neutral zone. Just a little bit too far for Lazier. Well tried to pick it up on the far side. Knocked away from him, though, and pushed down by Painovich. Lazier tries to chase that one into the corner. He's able to fight that one off the boards. Plays it back to the blue line. That shot comes through and is saved made by Blanick. On the shot by Berglund. Puck underneath. Dragons trying to get something set up out in front. Velvoda had it. Velvoda gets tripped in the corner and goes down. Puck still comes free back up top. And another shot from the blue line by Berglund. And the clearing attempt's going to be too far for everybody. So it'll be an icing call. We'll head all the way back into the Monticello end of the arena. Yeah, I think that shot by, by uh, was it Kirby? Uh, Berglund, Berglund on the, uh, Berglund, on the yeah. right wing, or think, the right uh, point. I think he hit Velvoda there in the shin on that one, so. Otherwise, that had, it was going right directly on the net, so. Ethan Agar on the far side will oppose Roman Thompson. Agar underneath, works his way over the near side, centered it out in front, and a beautiful play, got it on the doorstep for Velvoda. We've heard those names in the girls' side for quite a few years. And now they have taken center stage on the boys' side of things. Puck into the corner on the near side now for the Moose. As they've worked it back the other direction. Shot out in front as Simon somehow got free and just walked right onto the doorstep, but a good stop by Grabovel. Puck played underneath. Meeting at the puck, Agard puts in a check, knocks the puck away, but the puck comes right out in front. That's too much of a dangerous spot for a guy like Landon Sherber and really anybody for the Moose. That puck squirted right out onto the doorstep and just an easy pitch and catch for Sherber to be able to put that one on the high corner. Yeah, he was standing there wide open, nobody covering him, and it was a perfect pass and, and kind of a good setup and not, not much dribble ball could have done on that one. Uh, just a quick shot right right off the bat there. So, And you talk about Grubavo, like coming out high and just trying to make himself a big target is about all you can do, but he put that one, tucked it right underneath the crossbar. That's about a perfect shot you can get. Yeah, you can't leave guys that wide open in front either. So, But, you know, good, good play by Monticello, and, you know, Pine City's got to have to pick that up. Monticello trying to push the puck maybe underneath and try to be able to get the heads turned and then just drift somebody onto the doorstep. Worked on that play to the tune of a 1-0 lead. Puck back the other direction. Quick shot over to the near side on the one-timer. Got a little deep on O'Donnell. Couldn't get anything on it with his stick, and it went past the net. That one caught high. Shot saved made by Grabovel, and a rebound picked up once again by the Moose. They tried to play that one underneath. Dragons pick it up and play it back over to the near side. They'll get it back to the blue line. Anderson sends it down the length of the ice and then peels off for a change. Puck knocked away on the far side. Widmark tried to work it up ice, but it got knocked away from him. But the Monticello Moose, relentless through the neutral zone, continually just picking the puck up and starting it the other direction. Bros now picks it up. Works his way in the left wing. Fires a shot. Safe. Big rebound kicked out in front, but it just out of the reach of Lazier. Lazier now takes it away, and Lazier steps out in front. Couldn't quite get it past Blanick, but Lazier, another golden opportunity. That Bros and Lazier combo is lethal for this Dragon squad, and they've had their chances tonight, just haven't quite been able to cash in. Yeah, and, uh, you know, it's nice to see them kind of come back and answer that goal by putting in some pressure there. Uh, you know, near misses, keep that up there. They're going to get the breaks going their way, so... Face off far side left of Blanick. He'll come back for the Dragons. Stepping up and putting a shot in was Berglund, but he got knocked to the ice for his troubles. Puck along the far side, stepping down on that one, Painovich. Back to the point, Berglund. Berglund tried to play that one out in front. He shot it right into the stick of Ziegelmeyer, knocked the stick out of his hands. Laser on the far side, tried to hold the zone, but just played it back in. Ziegelmeyer broke his stick, actually, on the play, so he broken piece of lumber out there. However, actually, 
these days it's probably a weaved graphite hybrid something and the puck dribbles out in front. The puck was back behind the net and somehow ended up on the doorstep. Milo Ryberg was in the area and he's gonna come through the line first. I don't know if he's gonna get the goal, but the puck was just trapped back behind the net. Lauren, did you see what happened there? <laughs> well, I just think it was just kind of played in front and uh, Milo was just right on the doorstep. All he had to do was tap it in and took advantage of it, you know. I believe he's a freshman, so getting this, I don't know if this is his first varsity goal, but you know, hats off to the, to the young kid. Yeah, it is going to be Rydberg. So, and it's unassisted too. So, as I mentioned, the puck was just behind the net, kind of trapped there. And the puck just dribbled out in front. It wasn't a clear assist, it wasn't a clear pass. It just ended up on the doorstep. As the Dragons even the score and look to put more pressure on. Now, goals don't have to be pretty, they just have to be goals, and that's exactly what he said. Just went in there and just cleaned house and put her in. So. Ugly goals still count. That is a for sure fact of hockey life. I've seen it many times. <laughs> Puck laid down underneath. Kirby tried to play it over to the near side, but it's taken away by Sherber, the Moose goal scorer. He tried to center it out in front, but Kirby's the only one there. He'll flip it high back out to center, backing off on that one and knocking it down. Widmark will try to start it back the other direction. Centering feed, trying to get it for Agard. And it was deflected up in the air, and the Dragons, again, getting some opportunities. They're not getting consistent pressure in the zone, but they are able to get some breakout opportunities and able to move up ice. Uh, the, the shots on goal were long it up until a few minutes ago, and now shots 7-5 favor Monticello right now. So, again, good job by Pine City answering Monticello here. Puck backhanded high and down the ice. Ryberg sent that one down the length, and they are going to whistle that one dead. I wasn't sure it was going to quite have enough. I think maybe another minute and a half of some sleet out there. I don't think it makes it all the way to that back line. Uh, but. That was about as slow as slow can be. <laughs> but I'm, I'm liking the uh, the speed right now we're seeing by two of the youngsters here on the uh, Dragon Squad, the uh, Agard and Velvoda. They, they're just flying on, on the ice when they're getting their opportunities, and that's just nice to see. Both sophomores for this young squad. Puck back to the point. Be kept in by Widmark on the far side. Pushed up against the boards. Puck squirts free now with Stoll. Stoll works his way back underneath. Puck over to the near side. Chopped along the boards. Not out. Kept in by Schmitz. Played it back down into the corner. Schmitz will get it right back up top. Ooh, somehow kept that one in. I thought it bounced over his stick, but he's able to keep it in. Now Thurman took it away. Tried to lead that one back out through center for Bros, but just couldn't quite connect with him on the backhand. Monticello, however, carries it into their own zone. Back underneath it went. Puck on the near side. Leisure tried to get it out in front, trying to get that one out of the doorstop for Painovich. Just couldn't quite connect with them, and it'll be knocked away by the Moose, sent down the length of the ice. Nope, knocked down. Back out through center. Puck pops up into the air. Moose kicking it ahead on the far side, trying to come right down Broadway. Agard harassing all the way in. Sturtzman tried to be able to carry it in and get... Pushed off the puck. Puck flipped over to the far side. And it'll come back out to the neutral zone. Dragons carry it through now with Velvoda. Velvoda underneath. Tried to chase that one down and the moves pick it up and losing an edge on that far side, McGriff, but I do not see a hand up anywhere. I think he just maybe lost an edge, but that's usually, even if there's not a trip, a lot of times you'll see that call just yeah. because of the nature of the way he went down. Yeah, uh, but it was clearly just uh, losing his edge on that, and the ref was right on top of that one to see that too, so. Puck over to the far side, just a little bit too far the attempted pass for Ziegelmeyer. It'll come all the way back now for Haug. Haug all the way deep into his own zone. Joined there by Luciano Shisano. Agard will gather it up and look to start it out. Back for Shisano. Back off the boards, Haug. Looks to try to get it out. Haug, one of these long-term dragons. Some of that leadership out there on the ice with kind of a young line when you got Agard, Valvoda, and 
and others providing some of that balance maybe. 6.26 to go here in the period. 1-1 one, one, our score between the Dragons and the Moose. And Dragons kept, pick it up and send it down the length of the ice. This one on goal, so no icing. But it does allow everybody to check back up. Nelson back to pick it up. He rifles that one quickly up ahead, trying to get it for Roman Thompson. Into the corner. Gunner no, Simon. Clearing attempt is kept in by Mick. His shot is knocked to the corner on the far side. Simon lays that one off at the point for Nelson. Back underneath. Wraps around the boards all the way over to the near side. Stepping down, Broles comes away with it. Looks to start it out. Cross size now for Painovich. Nice play off the boards. Be able to get that back to himself. Now ahead for Laser. Laser can make things happen. Able to get past this gate. I thought that uh, was thought it. It, was it hit the too. crossbar and came back out. You know, there was no I, sign by the referee either that he waved it off or, or waved the goal. And I didn't hear the clank of a crossbar at all, but I no. also didn't see any of the fans freak out. So I guess that did actually hit a crossbar, but it looked like it uh, tucked underneath. I don't know how he even got himself free. He was no. able to get that pass. Beautiful play by Painovich to be able to move that through and be able to get that one up ahead for Leisure. And then he was able to slip no. through a defender just to get a shot away. Yeah. It's just... Uh... You know, from from our angle, I, I thought it was in, but I, you know, like I said, it's probably off the back of the goaltender or something. I don't know. And I do uh, appreciate, have a large appreciation for what I just seen as well. Uh, it, right before that play, the two officials, the linesman and then the head official that was down there, conferred. That's what you see in right. Make sure of it, and they're like, nope. Yeah, I said the same thing. And so, oh. I appreciate the fact that they took that second, made sure that they had the right call, and then went ahead with it. Faceoff comes back out to the neutral zone. Be picked up there by Thurman and rifled deep in. Under five minutes to go here. Period number one from the Pine City Civic Center. Puck back to the point. That one's going to be kept in. Deflected puck out in front. Clemenson tried to throw that one out and on the doorstep. Got deflected and popped up to the air. I don't know that Blanick even knew where it was. Puck back to the point. Schmitz now for the, for the Moose fires a shot in. That one's deflected up into the netting back behind Grabovel. 1-1 here with 4.41 to go. Andy Beckstrom, Lawrence Skluzacek on the call of tonight's game. And like what we're seeing so far for the uh, battle, the fight that they have, especially after that goal. Yeah. This, uh, this game's picked up right where that sectional game left off last year. Both teams up and down, end-to-end -end action. Beautiful opportunity out in front. Seaman puts that one off the side of the goal, cre or the goal housing. Puck underneath, centering attempt. Trying to get that one onto the doorstep. Stoll tried to get it for O'Donnell, but tied up. Good defensive play there by the Dragons. Now taken away by Agar. Tried to lay that one ahead for Valvoda, but a little bit too strong on the pass. It'll come all the way back down now for Schmitz. Schmitz in his own end. Puts the brakes on, goes the other direction. Comes back over to this near side as the moves come back out through center. Puck laid up ahead. It'll be brought back in on the left wing now by Sieben. Sieben weaves his way through. Able to slide that one past Rydberg. Puck goes back underneath. Working over to this near side, Stutzman gets it back to the point. Shot by Beard is deflected. Now the puck taken away and a shot by Sieben on a turnaround. Rifled high and wide. Puck back underneath. Shisano pushed up against the boards. Agard now digs that one away. Gets that one across for Haug. Try to get it back to the point, but the Moose again able to keep that puck in the zone. Their defensemen do such a great job being able to keep that puck in the zone. It almost seems sometimes like they have an extra defenseman along that blue line. It seems like it, you know, it's, Pines making some nice plays to try to get it out, but it just, they just can't get through that wall. 1-1 one, one our score between the Moose and the Dragons. Moose have put some pressure on, but so have the Dragons as this game has gone along. Again, join us during the intermission break. We'll talk to a member of the Pine City coaching staff and recap the scoring and what happened in the first period. Up to now, how we got there as the puck heads down the length of the ice and smothered by Blanick for the moose at the other end. Three ten to play, face off near side right of Blanick. Draw one back. 
towards the Dragons, but chipped up ahead now by Thompson as the Moose come away with it. Out ahead for Thompson, trying to slide that one across. Big collision out in front. Grabal ends up in the net, but the Dragons come away with the puck the other direction. They got numbers three on two. Bros trying to split the defenders, got his way out in front, but he just ran out of real estate. And the Moose get it cleared back out to the neutral zone. Credit the Dragons not only withstanding that pressure, withstanding that hit, but not getting tied up in the minutia of what happened, letting the play play out and moving up ice. Yeah, nice. Uh, just, just the assertiveness here by the, the Dragons. and uh, you know they're, they're not letting, they're taking their foot out the gas here either tonight. So. Puck sent down the length of the ice. It was a beautiful play trying to be able to get slipped that one out in front for Bros, but just a little bit too far creates the icing call. And we got to go back down the length of the ice into the dragon zone. Should we call it the dragon's den? Is that what we should <laughs> add into the ice? I, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that'll be the arena is what we'll call it. Pay face off on the far, or puck on the far side rather. Played up high off the top of the net. That one whistled by and high and wide by Widmark. Puck underneath as Moose, Moose tried to be able to contain the puck in the zone and keep on that consistent pressure. They've had puck possession, but they have, if you want to talk about scoring chances, they're pretty close to even. Shots on goal are a little bit in their favor, but scoring chances are not too far apart. I, I don't know if they're putting all the shots on goal because the, the long shot down there did get added for Pine, and neither did the one there on uh, Laser that last one. So I think the Pine City's probably got a couple more shots on goal than what's indicated there. So. Puck sent down the length of the ice as the Dragons get the clear. 96 seconds remain in the period. So we'll add a couple more shots onto their side, as Lauren says so. 1-1 <laughs> one, one is our score. Face off on the far side right of Dragon Netminder. Puck one back by the Dragons. Over to the near side and starting it out now, Bros. Lays that one back out through center. Painovich tried to lay that one off on the far side. Laser somehow able to stay on, on sign in a backdoor feed. Trying to get it for Bros. Just couldn't quite get it to his stick. Well, that was so close that that could have connected. It would have been a nice quick shot on goal. And who knows what happens when you shoot on goal. So That's a nice saucer pass going rink wide. Just couldn't quite. Just too many sticks in, in the way there. A tough pass to be able to make. But... Looked really good up until it couldn't quite make, get the connection. Puck down the length of the ice as we go under one minute remaining here in the first period at the Pine City Civic Center. Puck back out to the neutral zone. Be knocked down and sent back by Levi Well. Moose underneath. Check put in on by Shisano. Puck over to the far side, Beard. Pinned up against the boards, he comes away with it. Works his way on the low line. That shot comes from point blank by Roman Thompson. And that was more the puck caught Grabalvo rather than he caught it. He yeah. was just in perfect position, so credit him for being in position, but there was no reaction time to that. No, no, it's a, the, the style of goaltenders play now. I mean, you see a lot of saves like that where 20, 30 years ago with the old style stand up, that might have got between the, the legs and the stick. So good uh, alertness and focus there on, on Grimwald's part. Under 30 seconds to play here in the first period. Puck along this near side. Rod around over to the near side. Sherber tried to play it back to the point. Instead it goes underneath now for Simon. Simon played it over to the far side, but Painovich there steps in the way of that pass. Tried to get that one across for Leisure. Got knocked away from him. Now for Bros. Dragons trying to maintain possession. Ahead it comes off the stick of laser. It'll head down the length of the ice, but that will be the end of the first period. One to one is our score here after one period of play. And a tremendous period of hockey if you're a fan of the, uh, of the Dragons as they played very well in that period. We'll resurface the ice. We'll get a coach up here from the Dragons and we'll recap the first period of action when we return on FM 100.9 WCMP.
Are you looking for a position where your role impacts the community around you? Then look no further than Burnett Dairy Cooperative in Grantsburg, Wisconsin. Owned by the farmers in your community, Burnett Dairy offers numerous career options with various responsibilities and growth opportunities. Positions such as CDL drivers, who work closely with our farmers, cheese production, creating award-winning cheeses, and retail store clerks making someone's day better. Visit BurnettDairy.com and click on Careers to join our heard. Everyone knows there are great places to play in northwestern Wisconsin, but did you know there are great places to work? Burnett Dairy Cooperative is just outside of Grantsburg, Wisconsin, and offers numerous career options with a wide variety of responsibilities, schedules, and growth opportunities. Some positions may include CDL driver, cheese production, and seasonal workers. Burnett Dairy Cooperative has competitive wages, 401k, profit sharing, and many other great benefits. Be part of our herd. Visit BurnettDairy.com and click on careers. Your journey to smile with your forever starts at Embrace Orthodontics. The team at Embrace is committed to providing world-class care and a remarkable orthodontic experience. Choose between custom light force braces or Invisalign clear aligners with locations in Pine City, Lindstrom, and Cambridge. And a plan to fit your budget, whether you have insurance or not. Embrace Orthodontics will make your smile journey comfortable, convenient, and customized just for you. Visit EmbraceMN.com today to find out how to set up your free exam. EmbraceMN.com. Embrace Orthodontics. A smile you will embrace forever. Hey, you looking for a reliable propane supplier? Look no further than Burnett Dairy Propane. Proud to serve you, providing top-notch propane services all year round. Offering convenient delivery options and flexible payment plans that suit your schedule and budget. Trust the experts in the field, Burnett Dairy Propane. Call them today at 715-689-1032 or visit them online at burnettdairy.com. Burnett Dairy Propane, your dependable propane partner. Oh man. Hinkley Collision. Hell no. My new car? Hinkley Collision is the right decision. Fender benders, major accident damage, or hail damage. Hinkley Collision is the right decision. With 24-7 towing and fast, friendly, professional service, their collision department will get you back on the road in no time. With decades of experience dealing with insurance carriers, make the call today. 320-384-7002. 320-384-7002. This can be the loneliest sound, and it's never the right time. Car in the ditch, you standing by the side of the road. Thank goodness Hinkley Towing is on the way. 24-hour service, experienced drivers, and state-of-the-art trucks. Put their number in your phone before you need it. Hinkley Towing, 320-385-4049. 320-385-4049. FM 100.9 WCMP, Andy Beckstrom joined with Lawrence Gluzacic here during the first period intermission. One to one is their score after one period of play as the youth of the Pine City have taken to the ice and going up and down the ice. We'll kind of let that video play for those who may be watching for somebody in particular. Boys and girls of, I'm assuming limited ages, but... Uh, I would say that. Running up and down all over the place here. <laughs> it's very fun to watch these guys be able to uh, give everything they got. Uh, there's a lot of ice time uh, falling down, but, uh, you know, it's it's still fun. Yeah. You know, and for these kids to come out and watch the high school kids, you know, or have them watch them play and playing in front of a high school crowd, it's got to be a big thrill for these, these little kids out here. And the uh, varsity players set up a kind of a – pseudo tunnel for them to skate out onto the ice on at the far end of the arena as well so you know kind of a, a giving it back i'm sure some of these kids probably experienced that when they were young and now they get the chance to be able to uh, pay that forward for uh yet another generation of you know dragon hockey talent that to be up and coming in future years turnaround shot just wide of the net here right in front of us in regards to the uh, the varsity, the uh, the big club out here tonight, though, uh, Lauren, it is 1-1, and that first goal and the way that the period kind of felt, you could see a couple people or you could maybe hear an argument that, that Monticello dominated the period, but I don't necessarily think that that's the case. No, no, not at all. Um, you know, 
Pine, you know, put themselves a little bit behind the eight ball by getting a penalty early, but they showed really good uh, good signs of being a mature team and, and killing that penalty and actually had the only scoring opportunity on that. But right after that, Monticello came back and a nice goal out front. We, uh, good pass from the corner behind the net there and the guy standing right open in the slot. Uh, just can't do that. But then, you know, Pine City came back and responded. They didn't score right away, but they, they answered that goal by putting pressure on, and then finally uh, uh, Ryberg found something in front of the net and just tapped it in like all good goal scorers will do, you know. And, uh, we're tied at one, so. And, and the shots on goal are 10 to 5, although I think we've discussed it probably is uh, maybe 10 to 7, you know, give or take maybe a couple of extra ones in there as well, but uh, you know, again, it seems like Monticello is dominating, but really the shots on goal aren't always necessarily the the full story of the game. We talked a little bit about, you know, during the period, uh, the scoring chances. And we don't necessarily keep that stat, but at the same time, you got to believe that Monticello might be winning that stat, but only by maybe one, maybe two. But it's got to be close because the Dragons have had numerous opportunities on the break, Leisure and Bros. And, and Velvoda. Velvoda. On and... and uh you know, Agard's uh, had some opportunity. There has been some tremendous chances. Yeah, Berglund had one nice shot from the point that deflected off one of their own players' uh, skates or shins. So, uh, like I said, the, the, the opportunities have been there for both squads. And, you know, right now, if you look at the goaltending, I'm going to give the edge to Pine City right now and, and that because, uh, well, he's looked sharp, and, and I don't think um, – who's the goaltender there? Uh, Blanick. Blanick. Uh, he just – Hasn't seen the, the high-quality shots from Pine City like Gribble's seen from, from Monticello tonight. And I don't, don't want to say that Blanick has looked lost, but at, no. the same t at the same time, there's been a couple of shots that there's been a deflection, and he's kind of looking for the puck. He's yeah, still kind of searching yeah. for it, and I think that maybe leads to what you're saying, that you don't get it really a feel for the game. You don't really get a chance to get into that rhythm, and if you see a couple of shots... Even the, sh the goal that went in, and that's one of the other things, too. You say one-to-one, -one, okay, well, how do you give the nod to somebody who gave up a goal? The goal that, that was scored on, on Gravalvo, there's nothing that he could have done about it. it no. The only thing that he could have done, if he was maybe another three inches taller and you know his shoulders were twice as broad, that's, there's really nothing. The shot came from point blank right out in front, and he put it off the crossbar that bounced straight down and in. So... There's really nothing. He he came out high. He slid out, squared up the puck, and just made himself a big blocking target. And, yeah. and you know that's you know, that's what you got to do. And, if, and he's know. had a couple other big saves here earlier in the period too, or kind of sparked Pine City. You know, can we get the big save? So let's go down and do something. And you know, and you alluded earlier that referees talked about a goal that we thought was a goal, but. Both of them, you know, confirmed it never went in, and, and you know, and that's kind of another thing too. You know, where did that shot come from, and and how, and that's kind of why giving the edge, small edge, to, to your ball in the goaltending department after the first period. One to one after one, we'll come back and we'll talk to uh, Coach Sauter when we return on FM one hundred point nine WCMP. Hinkley Toy. Hi, I'm on the side of the highway with a flat. Can you help me? On the way. Hinkley Towing? Yep. How can we help? We just had an accident and don't know where to bring the vehicle. No sweat. We'll come out now and bring you back to our collision center. Hinkley Towing. Experienced drivers, state-of-the-art trucks, and 24-7 service. For Hinkley Towing, call 320-385-4049 anytime. Hinkley Towing. 320-385-4049 anytime. FM 100.9 WCMP, Andy Beckstrom on hand back here in Pine City, Pine City Civic Center, 1-1 one, one after one period of play. Joined by Coach Sauter here during the intermission break. And uh, uh, first and foremost, Coach Sauter, uh, your impressions of the first period? Yeah, pretty solid. We came out flying. Um, you know, we're a really good skating team this year, and we believe that we can skate with anybody, and I think we did that that period against a very solid team. You know, they're currently ranked 10th in Class A, so uh, I know the boys had a little nerves, but, you know, we told them before the game, just a number doesn't mean anything. We played these guys tough in the past, and uh, yeah, I thought it was a good overall first period. It, Lauren made the uh, comment uh, during the course of that period, the way th that it was up and down. It seems like it's just basically is a continuation of that section game from last year. Some of the faces have changed, but at the same time, toe to toe with them, right there with them, and it seems like maybe after a little bit of nerves, it seems like they've settled in very nicely. 
Yeah, we had a little bit of a defensive breakdown there on that first one. Um, our D were out of position. Our offside wing was a little out. We left the guy wide open. Great shot bar down. Uh, but other than that, you know, we corrected those mistakes. Um, neutral ice, we had a couple lapses as far as they like to go wide with their passes there. But, um, yeah, overall, we've had some good ozone time, got some good shots, and, yeah, overall pretty happy with the first. Uh, Laser, uh, no surprise that he's kind of in and around some scoring opportunities. Did you get a good look or get an explanation what happened on that one? I, from my angle, it looked like it went maybe in and back out, but I didn't hear it clang. But I did see the officials even talk to each other and confirmed. But I just I, I didn't know what happened on that. <laughs> well, we, coaches, we looked at each other on the bench. We thought it hit the little bar there between the padding and the back. But, uh, you know, the shooter usually knows, and he came back, thought it hit the crossbar. That was a tough one. We'll have to... Maybe see if we can see something on film. But regardless, I mean, what a play uh, by our sophomore captain, McCall. You know, he can make some, do some special things out there. And, um, yeah, him and Bros and Panovich, those guys have been getting chances all year. We just got to finish those. What's the message in the locker room? Uh, come out strong. You know, I know Monticello is not happy that they're tied 1-1 here. So uh, <laughs> they're going to come out flying. So we just got to maybe weather the storm for a few minutes and get back to our game. Sounds good. We appreciate you joining us. Thank you. Talking with Coach Souter here during the intermission break. We'll come back and we'll talk, recap the first period of action we return on FM 100.9 WCMP. Are you interested in a technical degree that can quickly help you land your dream career? Or maybe you've always dreamed of going to a four-year college, but you'd like to start close to home. Either way, Pine Technical and Community College has you covered. PTCC offers more than 50 degrees in hot fields like healthcare information technology, advanced manufacturing, and business. PTCC is now accepting applications. Financial aid may be available online at pine.edu. Starting out or starting over, find your future at Pine Technical and Community College. Kettle River Pizza is a proud supporter of sports teams and community organizations. Local groups and teams across the state have had amazing success with Kettle River Pizza fundraising. From sausage and pepperoni to chicken alfredo or the hot Hawaiian, the cheesy deliciousness practically sells itself. Visit KettleRiverPizza.com to schedule your next fundraiser. It's so easy to get started. Got a pizza craving now? Pick up a Kettle River Pizza at your local grocery store or convenience store today. There has never been a better time to sell your home. Get a fast cash offer today and have your money in as little as seven days. Any house, any condition. They will make you an offer the same day and pay you in as little as seven days. City lots, lake lots, land, does not matter. They want to buy it. If you are ready to sell your home, let Haley Newman with Keller Williams Premier Realty give you a fast cash offer or help get you into the home of your dreams today. Contact her at 320-469-6868. Joe and the gang at Roddy Motors say, Go Mustangs! Well, of course, he's got two boys on the varsity squad. He's born and raised in Mustang country, voted Reader's Choice Best Dealer in Canabic County. Two years in a row, that's what you call a repeat champ. And he offers vehicles of all makes and models, can get you financed on site, and put you in your new vehicle before the Mustangs take on next week's opponent. When you need a quality new vehicle, make your way to Roddy Motors in Mora, or visit RoddyMotors.com. FM 100.9, WCMP, Andy Beckstrom, Lawrence Kluzacek here. After one period of play, one to one is our score. Things got going uh, minute one into the game, so pretty quick, a uh, penalty on Hunter Hogg, a tripping minor in the corner, put Monticello on the power play. I, I don't know that we necessarily had the feeling of, oh no, here we go again, or anything like that, but I think it was more of a not nerves, but more of a you can't give Pines or you can't give Monticello this. And I mean, I shouldn't say this many because it was only one in the period, but you can't give them opportunities like that. And it was a little kind of like a we'll see how they weather this. Yeah, and you know, and they they weathered the storm on that. And actually, like I said, really Monticello did not get a scoring chance on that uh, on that power play, and Pine really had the only scoring opportunity there. So. Uh, Pine City responded well to the early penalty. Uh, I'm sure, like Seth alluded to, that Monticello's probably not happy with the way they're only one one game and having a power play and all that. So that's going to probably be addressed by Monticello in there that we got to get more scoring chances when we're on the power play. First goal of the game came at 4:38. Sherber from Thompson. Monticello made it one to nothing, and it, it almost had a, a momentary feeling of. Okay, and this is where Monticello really kind of takes over because, and it's no knock or no negative anything towards the Pine City squad, just more so a matter of 
Monticello has been there and done that year in and year out, and they're just always really technically sound and really solid, and they're the 10th-ranked team in state right now. So, you know, they're, they're a very high-quality squad. But just a few minutes later, 641, puck pops out in front, Ryberg puts it in the back of the net. We're at 1-1, and it seemed like from that point on, things were about even. Monticello, I think, maybe had a couple more minutes of possession zone, zone time, but shots on goal, scoring chances, opportunities. I don't know that it was necessarily clear, you know, far and away Monticello's game. I thought that Pine City skated with them toe to toe, and you know that that it shows up on the scoreboard that it's still one one. But they, you know, they had their opportunities to be able to take advantage as well. Yeah, they they did, and you know the, the thing is, you see the veteran players from the Pine City team, you know flying out there you know not slowing down at all and and it's you know coming down to the the new kids on the block here uh, the velvotas and the berglins and the uh uh a guards and, and those kids are they hanging they're, tough they're hanging tough <laughs> <laughs> you know i mean just making music references here <laughs> <laughs> but uh you know so it, it's a good sign you know where where the the first year varsity players here are just picking up where those veterans are leaving off so uh you know, we're early in the season. We're early in this game. So, I mean, I'm looking forward to a lot of good things to come from this game and, and the season ahead. Uh, again, Monticello said 10th in the in the state. So that means they're in our section. This is a meaningful game section-wise. But, you know, they're also a conference foe, too. And Pine City dropped one last week to Cambridge. I don't know where Monticello is right now. But, you know, if, if they can pick up a win and get back 1-1 in the conference and that one win against Monticello, you know, it can send a message to the rest of the team. Say, hey, you can't take this Pine City squad lightly. And that's, I, I think, one thing that uh, is a key to coming into this game is, you know, as we talked a little bit about, you know, the where everybody is, uh, Pine City 1-2 and two on the year. Uh, kind of starting a little bit slow, but I, I don't know that that necessarily means a whole lot to a certain extent. We've seen numerous teams start slow at every different level, you know, at different times and be able to finish strong. And that's really what kind of what you got to be able to do. Uh, as I mentioned, one and two, the uh, loss to um, Cambridge A. Sandy was five to two here on home ice. But the first two games, a 4-1 win over the top of Marshall. And then the other game, a 2-1 loss to Irondale St. Anthony. You could maybe flip-flop that one and mm -hmm. it'll be interesting to see if, you know, if or when... You know, they play uh, uh, Cambridge A. Sandy again maybe later on this season. How that one maybe transpires maybe a little differently. Well, that, that, that Cambridge game was kind of three different games in one because it was 2 nothing Cambridge after one, 2-2 two -two after two, and then it ended up 5-2 where they got a, uh, I can't remember, the power play goal or whatever, but the last goal was an empty net. So the 5-2 score wasn't indicative of what the game was. It was a lot closer than the score indicated. Uh, you know, but Pine City never quit in that game either. So, like I said, there's they're a young team, a lot of first-year players on this team. Um, Cambridge has a lot of returning guys as well as Monticello. I believe they got, you know, uh, a bunch returning from a year ago. But, you know, my memory serves me right. Since Monticello has dropped down to Class A and since Pine City has been playing Monticello in the Mississippi 8 in, in the sections, I don't think Pine City has beaten Monticello. And I, I know that's probably sitting in both teams' mind. You know, we're not going to lose to Pine City. And mm -hmm. Pine City, we we got to get over that hump and beat Monticello. So. Yeah. And, you know, I think that they maybe have a chance to be able to do that. All it takes is that one opportunity, play well, and be able to make something happen. Monticello, 2-1 and one on the year. They have wins over the top of Little Falls and Litchfield, Dassel, Cocado. But they do have a 5 nothing loss to Orono. I mean, Orono should be one of the top teams in state, but at the same time, 5 nothing doesn't exactly lend to uh, being competitive with the top teams no. in state. You know, so maybe, I don't want to say that they're overranked because you never want to say that about a Monticello team. They're going to be in the thick of things yeah, when it comes down to the end. But at the same time, they're, maybe you can think that they're gettable. Maybe you can get aggressive and you can maybe steal one from them. Yeah, and, you know, you look at these scores 5 nothing. I mean, without seeing the game or, or knowing anything about it, I mean, you can look at it and say, well, it looks like Arnold dominated it, but maybe it was closer than we thought, too. And, you know, sometimes the scores don't indicate how a game was. So, uh, again, Arnold's been a state team. Monticello's been a state team. So, uh, 
they're all they're all good squads we're facing. So, Pine City's turn, I guess. <laughs> 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 one to one after one is our score. We'll come back with the start of the second period here in Pine City when we return on FM 100.9 WCMP. Kettle River Pizza loves supporting all the local teams. And if your team is interested in fundraising, well, they've got you covered. Kettle River Pizza has years of experience in fundraising for local teams, organizations, and clubs, and they would like to help you too. With their experience and the fact that Kettle River Pizza is an easy sell, your fundraiser is bound to be a great success. Visit Kettle River Pizza online and click on their fundraising tab. Kettle River Pizza, a winner every time. Grab a few at your local convenience or grocery store for after the game. Arrowhead Transit plays a pivotal role in bolstering the communities it serves. By providing accessible and reliable transportation, they ensure essential travel for work, education, and health care. Arrowhead Transit is customer-centric, continuously evolving to meet the needs of the community with initiatives like community outreach programs, job fairs, and educational workshops, and more. Arrowhead Transit is more than just a transportation service. It is a vital part of the communities it supports. Your connection, your community, Arrowhead Transit your ride. Aw, oh, man. Hinkley Collision. Hell no. My new car? Hinkley Collision is the right decision. Fender benders, major accident damage, or hail damage. Hinkley Collision is the right decision. With 24-7 towing and fast, friendly, professional service, their collision department will get you back on the road in no time. With decades of experience dealing with insurance carriers, make the call today. 320-384-7002. 320-384-7002. Embrace Orthodontics offers a unique specialized approach to orthodontic treatment with custom braces or Invisalign. The team at Embrace loves getting to know their patients personally and takes the time to make sure all your questions are answered. Their board certified orthodontists use only the latest in modern technology to give you the best outcome possible. They work with your insurance company and offer flexible financing options to fit your budget. Call today to set up your free exam and see how Embrace Orthodontics can transform your smile. More online at EmbraceMN.com. That's EmbraceMN.com. Wellia Health is here to keep you feeling your best so you can enjoy all the things you love best. You can count on us for your eye exams, mental health services, rehabilitation, wellness exams, urgent care, and much more. At Wellia Health, our goal is to help you live life well. Let Wellia Health help you get back to your best. Give us a call today to set up an appointment. 320-679-1313. WelliaHealth.org. Are you looking for a position where your role impacts the community around you? Then look no further than Burnett Dairy Cooperative in Grantsburg, Wisconsin. Owned by the farmers in your community, Burnett Dairy offers numerous career options with various responsibilities and growth opportunities. Positions such as CDL drivers, who work closely with our farmers, cheese production, creating award-winning cheeses, and retail store clerks making someone's day better. Visit BurnettDairy.com and click on Careers to join our heard. Everyone knows there are great places to play in northwestern Wisconsin, but did you know there are great places to work? Burnett Dairy Cooperative is just outside of Grantsburg, Wisconsin, and offers numerous career options with a wide variety of responsibilities, schedules, and growth opportunities. Some positions may include CDL driver, cheese production, and seasonal workers. Burnett Dairy Cooperative has competitive wages, 401k, profit sharing, and many other great benefits. Be part of our herd. Visit BurnettDairy.com and click on Careers. FM 100.9 WCMP. Andy Backstrom on hand here in Pine City. Pine City Civic Center, home of the Dragons. Playing host to the Moose of Monticello, which I always thought it was interesting that they're the magic for everything else, but their hockey team is the Moose. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I kind of heard that that first year they went to state tournament, and because uh, Annandale and, uh, what is it, Maple Lake down there are part of the program. Oh, okay. Why, and, uh, so the, kind of the co-op. Uh, the co-op, and then uh, the guy who really brought hockey to Monticello or whatever the story was. The, the, the arena's named after him. The, the yeah, it is the Moose Share at Arena. Moose Share, so, yeah. yeah. So his nickname was Moose, so in honor of him, that's why they took Moose as their, their name for hockey. But, I mean, 
you know, I see Monticello Magic, it just, I always thought they were the moose and right. follow hockey too much. But. <laughs> just a little different, a little quirk of uh, quirk of things a little uh, bit. And then remember the first day tournament they were in, and, you know, Jim Eric's on TV said that their logo looked like the old Minnesota moose from the old. Mm-hmm. Uh, I remember that. So. It is kind of a, a resemblance to that. So I don't remember what level that was. I remember watching it on TV. It was on like channel 23 every yeah. so often, and, but it was fun to watch. Yeah, it, it wasn't the North Stars, but it was hockey. We still have a, 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 Mon- a Minnesota Moose in our area, but it's a, a juniors team, though, a little bit different. And right off the draw, as we are underway, Coach talked about they're going to have to withstand a little bit of pressure. Yeah, and I don't know what happened there. There was a rebound that they they buried after the initial shot. Uh, But again, it it looked like there was three red players down there and one white. So Nine Uh, seconds in, and Roman Thompson makes it now 2-1 to as... uh, They just took the puck, went down the ice, and found a spot short side on the near side on, on Grubauble. No, you just got to see how Pine City's going to respond to this, you know, if they can answer this back right away. And Coach did talk about, you know, you just got to be able to withstand a little bit of pressure, withstand that first punch, and on offsides at the line, Panovich comes in just a touch early. Well, but you can hear the... the the chatter now on the Moose sideline. The yeah. players and uh, coaches kind of fired up, starting to kind of feel that energy just a little bit. So we'll see if the Dragons can kind of withstand some of that pressure. How they respond, as you mentioned. Puck along this near side. Pinned up against the boards. We'll come back out to the neutral zone as sticks go flying all over the place. And we got hands up in the air and we got a slashing penalty coming to, looks like it's gonna be on Pine City. It's gonna be on Hunter Hogg once again. He's got a trip and now he's got a slash. So less than a minute in, you have a goal by Monticello and now a power play opportunity for Monticello. Not exactly the start that you wanted to have happen if you're a Dragons fan. No, just the exact opposite of what Seth just talked about between periods. So, Puck over to the near side. Big check put in by Leisure. For a sophomore, does not play like a sophomore and does not throw his body around like a sophomore. No. As the puck comes through, shot comes through. Save made by Sh- Grabovel on a shot by Schmitz, but not held on to as the puck dribbled free to the corner on the far side. Digged out there by Stoll. Coming in to be able to help Ziegelmeyer. Trying to dig it away. Kicked away by Kirby. And the Dragons are going to get that one cleared back up to the point on the near side. Held in, though, by Widmark. Widmark gets it back. Walks the line. Slides that one over to the far side. Too far for Schmitz. It'll go all the way underneath. Stoll plays it around over to the near side. But the Dragons knock it away and clear it down the length of the ice. Be able to reset things. Moose come back out through the neutral zone. Schmitz on the far side, carries the puck all the way into the zone. Drops back to the point now for Thompson, who just scored the go-ahead goal, make it 2-1. to one. Down to 45 seconds left to go on the power play. The puck's knocked away by Agar. That was a good heads-up play by Agar to poke check that puck off the stick. And... Sherber tried to dance out in front with that one, but it was knocked away by the Dragons. Back to the point. All over to the near side, stepping up that one. Nelson fired a shot. That one hit a lot of traffic on the way through. I don't think it made it all the way through to Grabovel. Back up to the point. Touch pass back and forth between Simon and Nelson. And now the puck underneath. Got past the netminder, but it went wide to the net. And the puck will slide back out to the neutral zone. Eight seconds to go. Maybe one more chance for the Moose to try to push it up ice, but that will essentially kill off the power play. And the Dragons are back to even strength. So they've been able to kill off a second power play. Even though they still took that penalty. But you don't want to give the Moose too many opportunities like that. Well, 
uh, Monticello looked a lot better on this power play than their first one. Uh, had a couple good scoring opportunities and um, didn't allow Pine City any any mistakes to, to get down there and have a scoring opportunity themselves. Puck tipped out in front by Thompson and it got a deflection on the backside by Munson trying to be able to get a rebound shot. Now an opportunity in the other direction. Pros try to drive inside along with Laser. I think Laser got a stick on it to try to lift it. Laser now takes it away. Back door for Pros and we're tied up again. Right, that was just a, a nice pretty pass there out in front and Bro's wide open and and uh, made it. I was just going to say, you know, after that, that quick goal Pine City gave up in the power play, we just got to see how they weathered the storm. Well, they've weathered that storm pretty good, I would say. Yeah, it's, that is definitely an answer, and you don't have the big letdown. You get right back on the board. Now, if they can stop giving up those quick goals, <laughs> I think they'd be all right. <laughs> 3.49, the time of the goal. Well, 3.39, sorry. Lazier gets the lone assist on the Bros goal, two to two in the second. As the Dragons trying to stand tall here against this battle-tested bunch from Monticello. Puck underneath, out in front it goes and a quick snapshot goes just a little bit wide of the net by the Moose, pushed up against the boards on the near side, not out though, is able to hold it in at the point. Puck back underneath, Kirby spins in his own end, trying to be able to get his way away from Stutzman. Stutzman knocked it away from him, but Kirby got it right back. Kirby gets back out to center, good fight by, the, by Kirby. And now some collisions out at center, and we get a whole bunch of whistles. Looks like Sticks Pine flying City's, everywhere. Looks like Pine City's gonna have their first power play tonight here. An unsportsmanlike penalty. And they're talking here too, so we're gonna see if it's just the two. Yeah, it'll just be the two minutes, so. So the Dragons go on the power play now, 12.39 to go here in the period. We'll see what the Dragons can do on the power play. Puck up top now for Kirby. He'll run point. Fires that one in. Hits a leg. Gets deflected away. And it'll head down the length of the ice. Kirby will chase back after it. Sybin trying to knock it away from him. Now the puck is picked up. And now we have another delayed call coming against Monticello. Hand up in the air. Brought back by Panovich. Works his way into the zone. Drops for Lazier. Extra attacker is on for the Dragons. Lazier in the corner, slides for Bros. Bros turns, fires, shot, save made, rebound on the backside, just over skidded by a hair by Berglund, but he's able to maintain possession. Off for Berglund on the far side, Berglund. Tries to go back door, is stepping down with Bros. Bros out in front, Berglund yeah. tips it in. Laser on the weak side, crisscrossed, and a delayed penalty call, or delayed penalty goal. And the Dragons have the lead. That was just some nice work there once they got the, uh, the delay penalty. Pine City just controlled that puck that whole time and made good things happen. And uh, the kind of caught Monticello leaning a little bit on their backs. And uh, Monticello couldn't clear get a possession here to stop that whistle. But uh, needless to say, Pine City will still have a minute seven left the power play. So. <laughs> what what patience. That's probably the biggest thing, I guess, in my mind, was the patience showed by them. They didn't panic. They didn't try to get out of themselves. They didn't try to just rush a shot. They didn't yeah. try to just, let's just throw something on. They went ahead and just, we're going to be patient. We're going to just take our time. We're going to play it smart and play it like a power play. Yeah. And they had the two-man advantage. But now we just got a, another penalty here for cross-checking. 
So now we have a penalty on a cross-checking minor on Micah Seiben. A cross-checking minor. Okay, that must have been the original call. So the, the so they wipe off the penalty that's on the board and put the new penalty up there. So the Dragons now have a minute 52 of a power play and really a golden opportunity, I don't want to say to put the game away because there's no way you put the game away this early against a team like this. No. But you have an opportunity to be able to at least flex enough to say, hey, we're not going away. Yeah, and, uh, you know, it could be a big lift for Pine City if they could get this power play goal here because uh, having a two-goal lead will just boost these kids' confidence a lot. And it'll be interesting as the uh, second power play unit is out there. Agard has it turned over, though. Two-on-one from a short side. Save made on a shot quick in by Grabovel. Simon got deep in on that one, but the save was made. And now back through center it goes with the Dragons. Back for Agard. Agard tried to slide that one back underneath. And the second unit a little bit disjointed. I think Monticello trying to put some extra pressure on, try to be able to get something shorthanded. Berglund back behind, and the net, I think, came off. Didn't look like it from my end, but it must yeah. have came off just a hair. Ref is about 100 feet closer than I am, so. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it looks great to me, but. You know, and I like that when the refs see that, they notice it and call it right away, because it's. You don't think that much of it, but being off just a hair uh, could be a big advantage to the, the offensive team there, so. Again, a nice, nice spot by the rep to get that. Puck back through center as the Dragons try to get something set up on the power play unit. Back it'll come now for Kirby. 40 seconds remaining in the power play as the Dragons now brought their top unit back out there. Laid out for Lazier just a little bit too far, and now Sherbert's just going to carry it back into his own zone, trying to be able to kill off more time as this one's sent down the length of the ice. 25 seconds remaining. Kind of a dangerous way to be able to play that one there by Grabovel as he kind of yeah. <laughs> almost angled it towards his net a little bit. Although, but nonetheless, the Dragon's able to get it up ice. Although he knew what he was going to do right away with it. So uh, sometimes when goaltenders hesitate, that's when the disaster strikes. But Kirby all the way back into his own zone. He's watched closely there by Sherber. Three seconds remaining in the power play. Dragons will not get the power play goal on this one. But nonetheless, they are one of two at this point. And now we have another penalty coming. Another delayed call coming on the moose. Out in front it goes, touched up by Monticello. And that'll stop that right there in its tracks. And we were worried about the Dragons maybe starting to get rattled with some penalties, but it's the other way around now. And they're talking here, so this might be. I didn't see what happened down here with the call is, but. There's going to be another cross-checking minor. It's going to be a Steven once again. So Simon just came out of the box, and now he's right back in the box. Monticello tried to get a last-minute change, but well after the hand had gotten up. Pine City makes their last change. So they get their top unit out there back. It'll come now for Kirby to start things. Kirby lays it down underneath, gets by. Leisure up off the window all high on the far side and it'll be now an opportunity for the Moose coming back the other direction. Pass out in front, nice play by Kirby. Really nice play, just getting his stick out there into that passing lane. Stopped the passing lane and also took the puck away from the Monticello player. Leisure flips it in along that far side but not with possession. Puck now free in the high slot and it's gonna be chipped out by Sherber. And now we get another hand up, and I think another penalty coming. I believe this is going to go on to Dragons. Going to be a minor for interference now.
going to be on Kirby, who just made a tremendous play at the other end. And now a little discussion going on with the coaching staff. Looked like it was a lot of incidental. It happened kind of right underneath this, so yeah. kind of hard to really make a, a strong case one way or the other. But well, it seemed like a lot of tanglement and bodies going to the ground. When both players are, are giving it their all. You know, those things happen. And unfortunately for Pine City, they, they felt it was an interference call. But, again, don't fault the – Kirby for you know giving 110 percent on that. So, so with 8:59 to go, now we're even up four on four for at least a minute 24. Thurman has it slide by him. Rolls on the far side, and this is where you start to find out. Coach Sauter had talked that they can skate with anybody. They can use their speed. This is where you're going to have a chance to be able to show that speed when you have four on four. And right out in front, an opportunity. Bro's got all the way deep in on Blanick. Almost had him beat, but it goes just wide of the net. Puck ahead on the far side. Thompson brings it in. Back out to the point. Monticello, one of the things that impresses me so much about them, they have such great spacing. Yes. They don't get crunched in. They, they, they drive down to help, but they get such good spacing on everything they do. Yeah. Up ahead it comes now. Leisure with an opportunity just a little bit wide in the net. Now that puck slid up ahead just a little bit too far. I think that was probably just tired legs there more than anything. Thompson yeah. maybe on a beginning of a shit shift catches that one. But that one just a little bit too deep. Long lead pass going the other direction for the Dragons. Comes all the way back for Blanick. And out of their own zone, it'll be brought back by Widmark. Widmark back through center. Checked off the puck on this near side. Puck slides all the way back underneath. Panovich plays that one across, and it's going to be cleared down the length of the ice. They're going to call that one icing as the penalty has not come off. It came off, but when they threw it down ice, it was still even strength. Still even strength. So it's still a power, or still a yeah, icing yeah. call. Right now, I think uh, Monticello is just uh, a little bit faster than Pine City. And uh, Pine City is going to have to kind of slow that down or, or play that same speed. So 34 seconds remaining on the power play, and Curry will be back. Puck sent down the length of the ice. Check put in back behind the play. Monticello trying to take advantage, but it's taken away by Panovich. Panovich underneath. Trying to play that one in and almost getting that one across and limping off Cody Klein. What a great job by him to stay on the ice and be able to take advantage of the opportunity that was halfway afforded to him, mostly by just getting tangled up back yeah. behind the play. So he yeah. kind of got his leg tangled up a little bit but had two great opportunities there against Blanick as everybody was moving up ice for the Moose, and he was just behind the play just because of maybe a minor injury of some sort. Yeah. And it was a, a nice play and a nice shot, and a, you know, a great save there too by the Monticello goaltender to keep this uh, a one-goal game. And now we're back to even strength. Monticello 0 for 3 on the power play. And you, we've talked many times, you don't want to give them too many opportunities. Three, we'll say that three is enough. Yeah. They get no more <laughs> extra ones. Puck laid up ahead now. Big check put in on Bros. Puck slid free for Laser for a moment. Now flip back out to the neutral zone. And on the run, trying to be able to chase that one down is Sherber. And Sherber got there and is able to flip it by Grabovel. Uh, well, just a nice lead pass and, and uh, nothing fancy. He just went in and he just cranked the shot down it. So see kind of a little delay on the other side and yeah it just got out in front of everybody and he just kind of chopped at it kind of a I don't want to say a hard luck goal but kind of a you know it's a heads up play by the defenseman just to, to see the league guy out there and, and uh, again sometimes those shots maybe are taken in desperation when you're back checked like that but I mean he just put it on the net and beat herbal ball so Again, it just tied the game, but we'll see how Pine City responds to this one. They've answered everything else on Monticello's game tonight. So an opportunity now 
to see again how they respond. But I think that you got to start believing that at some point in time, the mystique of the Moose starts to wear off a little bit, being that you've taken a lead on them. You know, it just, I think the biggest thing you got to make sure you don't allow into your head if you're uh, especially one of the young players for the Dragons is just don't let the, well, here we go. <laughs> you don't let that creep into your mind. Say, this is our chance. This is going to be the one. Yeah, and, you know, you bring that up, uh, these young kids that they had er, er, a year ago played Monticello and the Bantams. Monticello's ranked third, and Pine City ended up winning a game there against them. So, you know, in the back of these younger kids' mind, you know, this is just Monticello. We've played them, and we've hung with them before. So uh, we'll see what happens here. 5.42 to go here in the second period as we are a little more than halfway through this hockey game. Puck underneath as it's picked up by the Dragons. Trying to bring that one back out. And again, it just always feels like Monticello has one extra guy out there just because of positioning that they always seem to be able to pinch away on the puck. This one laid up ahead now. Head for Bros. Bros tried to slide that one back for Lazier who got on in front. Lazier in the doorstep with Blanick. Can't get it past him. And the puck comes to the corner on the near side. This one out in front. Panovich put it in right into the chest of Blanick. Scrum out in front and Blanick. I think Blanick eventually was able to get a hold of it even though the puck went flying away. Flying out of that pile was Brody Mick, but I, I think that was more so a matter of a situational thing. We'll see if there's any penalties that come yeah. out of that one. Lager. I don't think there should be, but. Lager's getting one for cross-checking here, so. But so much of that stuff comes after the whistle, and you know that's where you got to keep your composure. And, you know, minor for roughing, assist to leisure. And that one, that one seemed more of kind of a situationally everybody kind of pushing and shoving, and that just happened to be one guy fell down. Again, Coach I, Sauter talking with one of the officials. You know, there's so much of that stuff that happens after the whistle, and it's usually the last guy that does something that'll get the call. So Pretty much. It's either you know, the last guy or the retaliation yeah, is usually what it so, is. It's, uh, Well, needless to say, Pine City is going to be shorthanded and, you know, uh, just have to keep their composure in here now and, and keep the scoring chances to minimal and, and just clear the puck when they can. And we've talked a couple of times that they've killed now three power plays. This will be the fourth opportunity, and you just can't give Monticello this many opportunities. That one comes down the length of the ice. Blanick was trying to be able to spring Stoll out in front of everybody, but... His pass is too long. I know it's almost actually picked off by Burroughs, who would have been able to bury maybe a shorty. Which he comes back with it anyway, puts a shot in on Blanick, save made. Now the puck sent up ahead for Ziegelmeyer. Ziegelmeyer, oh, nice. beautiful nice play. play Thurman. Thurman got out in front and was able to get into that passing lane, sliding through. Turnaround shot, that one whistled by by Stoll. Back to the point on the far side. Schmitz works the line over to the near side, goes out with a stick of Widmark, and it crosses the line, so the Moose have to come back out to the neutral zone. Back through it goes. Panovich comes away with it, and he's able to slap that one down the length of the ice with four minutes remaining in the period and under a minute to go in the power play. Back up ice come the Moose, now taken away by Agard. Agard trying to work his way the other direction. Can't quite gather it up, but he's able to keep it in the Moose zone nonetheless. So the Dragons, again, doing a good job being able to kind of control the neutral zone and control yeah. the play the neutral coming zone through. The last play, Velvoda was the one who got his stick on that, that puck and made that play possible for Agard. That one high off the window, wraps around over to the near side and it comes all the way down the length of the ice once again. Down under 30 seconds to go in the power play and Dragons pushing the Moose back into their own end once again. 
Back through center it goes and quickly up ice go the Moose. Thompson out in front now for Sherber. Over to the far side, Simon tried to play that one back up top. He's tied up and it's sent down the length of the ice by Kirby. Nice. Now will essentially wear off that penalty. It's been some nice defense on this uh, penalty kill here by the, uh, the Dragons. Really getting into the safe face of the Moose players. Couldn't let them get any opportunities really on that power play. Puck taken away at the neutral zone by the Dragons. They tried to play that one in deep and the Moose knocked that one away. A long pass over to the far side. Picked up and brought through by Thompson. Thompson tied up on the play. Good play. Kind of back checking there by Valvoda. Get his stick tied up. Kirby behind the net. Spins one direction. Now goes the other direction. Trying to kick that one along and work it up the near sidewall. Puck will squirt free and will come all the way back out to the neutral zone. Moose chase back into their own zone. Pick it up from there. Well played across for Thompson. That one's tipped back out to the neutral zone by Bayard. Baird will pick it up and bring it in on the right wing. Got all the way into the zone, but it's knocked away from him by Berglund. Valvoda didn't see it come sliding through to him. Now it's shot taken away from the point, and it goes wide in the net. Back behind. Over to the near side point. Kept in at the point by the Moose. Thurman was tied up on the far side. Couldn't get his stick to the ground. Puck over to the near side now on the wing for Well. Well will try to step down on that one, play that one back underneath, but missed the net wide. Puck back behind Ziegelmeyer. Ziegelmeyer steps out in front. Good save there by the netminer Grabovel again, just making himself a big wall, yeah. making himself a big object in the way. And that one kind of caught him up high, but he's able to knock it down and then, of course, keep it close and then get a control of the puck to be able to not to prevent any further attack. The way he played that, that angle on that, there was no place to go other than his body on that shot. So very, very nice play by Gerbald. 95 seconds remain in the period. Three to three is our score. Dragons look, looking to try to get going offensively a little bit as well. Panovic lays this one ahead for Agard. Agard tried to backhand that one in. I don't know that he had a lot of speed coming through. He got pinched on pretty quickly by the Moose. Otherwise had almost a little mini breakaway opportunity. That one's sent back in by the Dragons once again. Back underneath, played across by Widmark to the far side. Just getting it out of the zone as the Dragons take it away now with one minute remaining here in the, the second period. Puck knocked away, Leisure. Bros at the end of a long shift comes off and the puck comes over to the far side. Backhanded along by O'Donnell. Now O'Donnell chips that one up ahead to himself, up ahead, and O'Donnell steps up and he goes high on the glove side and with 35 seconds left to go in the period, the Moose retake the lead. Yeah, it was... Uh... A little mistake by Pine City in the defense was only allowed a two on one there. And, uh, you know, nice play by Monticello to come in and, and set the goal scoring opportunity and, and capitalizing on that. 16 25, the time of that goal makes it now 4 3 in favor of the Moose. Guys, a goaltender, two things you never want to do is give up a goal the first minute of a period or the last minute. And Monticello has been able to do that on Pine City in this period. That's something that can lift one team and deflate another. So we're going to have to see how Pine City can respond to this here now too. So O'Donnell gets the goal unassisted. Now the puck comes back in as the Moose maybe trying to make another bid. Taking away Painovich. Try to go rink wide for Bros. It gets deflected away and sent back down the length of the ice by the Moose. Berglund back behind. Trying to start it from his own end. Gets bumped off the puck. Thompson tried to take it away. Leisure picked it up, and that'll be the end of the period. Four to three, your score after two periods of play. The Dragons are hanging tough with the Minnesota Moose here after two periods of play. Shots on goal, though, 22 to 18. So really, even if we don't give credit for the two extra shots on goal from the first period, the Dragons win that period via shots on goal. Yeah. 
and played very well and hung right there with the moose the entire period. Yeah, and, and it's the Monticello moose there, Andy, not the Minnesota moose. Yeah, <laughs> like I said, <laughs> they're from Minnesota too. <laughs> but, but anyways, uh, yeah, it was, it was a good period. I mean, uh, a very entertaining period nonetheless. Uh, both teams flying that whole period. Pine City actually did take the lead, and, and Monticello came back to recapture the lead. So, uh, you know, a couple minor mistakes here that the Dragons made in the defensive zone uh, that, you know, allowed the Monticello to score. But, again, Pine City came back and, and did capitalize on some of the Monticello mistakes too. So uh, it's been just a very good competitive Pretty even teams at this point in the game. Four to three is your score after two periods of play. We'll come back and recap the period and talk with a member of the Pine City coaching staff when we return on FM 100.9 WCMP. Your journey to smile with your forever starts at Embrace Orthodontics. The team at Embrace is committed to providing world-class care and a remarkable orthodontic experience. Choose between custom light force braces or Invisalign clear aligners with locations in Pine City, Lindstrom, and Cambridge. And a plan to fit your budget, whether you have insurance or not. Embrace Orthodontics will make your smile journey comfortable, convenient, and customized just for you. Visit EmbraceMN.com today to find out how to set up your free exam. EmbraceMN.com. Embrace Orthodontics. A smile you will embrace forever. Hey, you looking for a reliable propane supplier? Look no further than Burnett Dairy Propane. Proud to serve you, providing top-notch propane services all year round. Offering convenient delivery options and flexible payment plans that suit your schedule and budget. Trust the experts in the field, Burnett Dairy Propane. Call them today at 715-689-1032 or visit them online at burnettdairy.com. Burnett Dairy Propane, your dependable propane partner. Oh man. Hinkley Collision. Hell no. My new car? Hinkley Collision is the right decision. Fender benders, major accident damage, or hail damage. Hinkley Collision is the right decision. With 24-7 towing and fast, friendly, professional service, their collision department will get you back on the road in no time. With decades of experience dealing with insurance carriers, make the call today. 320-384-7002. 320-384-7002. This can be the loneliest sound, and it's never the right time. Car in the ditch, you standing by the side of the road. Thank goodness Hinkley Towing is on the way. 24-hour service, experienced drivers, and state-of-the-art trucks. Put their number in your phone before you need it. Hinkley Towing, 320-385-4049. 320-385-4049. FM 100.9 WCMP, Andy Beckstrom joined by Coach Gross here during the second period intermission. And uh, uh, first and foremost, uh, four to three after two periods of play, your first initial impressions of the period. Uh, I thought the boys were really battling hard, you know. Like I said before this, the first period we were kind of scoring off the rush or getting chances, and now they are. So it's kind of been back and forth, but I think we stay out of the box. We, we got the advantage here. Uh, what was uh, some of the explanations that it had happened there? It seemed like there was kind of just some scuffling out in front and one of the Moose players fell, and then all of a sudden it ended up being a penalty on Leisure. Yeah. It seemed a little kind of uncharacteristic that it would be a rough on Leisure. <laughs> right, right. But it, what was it, kind of the explanation that was uh, given? Uh, that? So the captains were told before the game that anything hands up high, no matter what happens after that, it's going to be called. And so that's what the refs saw there, so he could hey, call it. Uh, what is kind of the feeling uh, on the bench? It, it seemed like initially uh, Monticello came out, scored that first goal, but it didn't seem like there was any panic. It didn't seem like there was any, oh, here we go again. They came back, scored a couple of goals, and took a lead there for a little while. Right, yeah. We were, uh, you know, we never felt down, and then we, we scored that second one there, and we started buzzing, and then we scored the third one, and then now the energy's way up, you know, on the bench. So I think if we just keep that going, we're going to be just fine. What's the message in the locker room for the third? Uh, we definitely got to clean up those odd man <laughs> rushes and stay out of the box. Those are probably the two main things. Also, uh, you know, covering our own net. That's been a issue probably most of the game here. We've left guys alone in front of the net probably a little too, more, too much. So uh, if we clean that up, we'll be fine. Sounds good. We appreciate you joining us here during the intermission break. We'll be back here in Pine City on FM 100.9 WCMP. 
Hinkley Towing. Hi, I'm on the side of the highway with a flat. Can you help me? On the way. Hinkley Towing? Yep, how can we help? We just had an accident and don't know where to bring the vehicle. No sweat. We'll come out now and bring you back to our collision center. Hinkley Towing. Experienced drivers, state-of-the-art trucks, and 24-7 service. For Hinkley Towing, call 320-385-4049 anytime. Hinkley Towing. 320-385-4049 anytime. Are you interested in a technical degree that can quickly help you land your dream career? Or maybe you've always dreamed of going to a four-year college, but you'd like to start close to home. Either way, Pine Technical and Community College has you covered. PTCC offers more than 50 degrees in hot fields like healthcare information technology, advanced manufacturing, and business. PTCC is now accepting applications. Financial aid may be available online at pine.edu. Starting out or starting over, find your future at Pine Technical and Community College. Kettle River Pizza is a proud supporter of sports teams and community organizations. Local groups and teams across the state have had amazing success with Kettle River Pizza fundraising. From sausage and pepperoni to chicken alfredo or the hot Hawaiian, the cheesy deliciousness practically sells itself. Visit KettleRiverPizza.com to schedule your next fundraiser. It's so easy to get started. Got a pizza craving now? Pick up a Kettle River Pizza at your local grocery store or convenience store today. There has never been a better time to sell your home. Get a fast cash offer today and have your money in as little as seven days. Any house, any condition. They will make you an offer the same day and pay you in as little as seven days. City lots, lake lots, land, does not matter. They want to buy it. If you are ready to sell your home, let Haley Newman with Keller Williams Premier Realty give you a fast cash offer or help get you into the home of your dreams today. Contact her at 320-469-6868. Joe and the gang at Roddy Motors say, Go Mustangs! Of course, he's got two boys on the varsity squad. He's born and raised in Mustang country. Voted Reader's Choice Best Dealer in Connecticut County. Two years in a row, that's what you call a repeat champ. And he offers vehicles of all makes and models. Can get you financed on site and put you and your new vehicle before the Mustangs take on next week's opponent. When you need a quality new vehicle, make your way to Roddy Motors in Mora. Or visit RoddyMotors.com. Kettle River Pizza loves supporting all the local teams. And if your team is interested in fundraising, well, they've got you covered. Kettle River Pizza has years of experience in fundraising for local teams, organizations, and clubs, and they would like to help you too. With their experience and the fact that Kettle River Pizza is an easy sell, your fundraiser is bound to be a great success. Visit Kettle River Pizza online and click on their fundraising tab. Kettle River Pizza, a winner every time. Grab a few at your local convenience or grocery store for after the game. Arrowhead Transit plays a pivotal role in bolstering the communities it serves. By providing accessible and reliable transportation, they ensure essential travel for work, education, and health care. Arrowhead Transit is customer-centric, continuously evolving to meet the needs of the community with initiatives like community outreach programs, job fairs, and educational workshops, and more. Arrowhead Transit is more than just a transportation service. It is a vital part of the communities it supports. Your connection, your community. Arrowhead Transit your ride. Aw, man. Hinkley Collision. Hell no. My new car? Hinkley Collision is the right decision. Fender benders, major accident damage, or hail damage. Hinkley Collision is the right decision. With 24-7 towing and fast, friendly, professional service, their collision department will get you back on the road in no time. With decades of experience dealing with insurance carriers, make the call today. 320-384-7002. 320-384-7002. Embrace Orthodontics offers a unique specialized approach to orthodontic treatment with custom braces or Invisalign. The team at Embrace loves getting to know their patients personally and takes the time to make sure all your questions are answered. Their board-certified orthodontists use only the latest in modern technology to give you the best outcome possible. They work with your insurance company and offer flexible financing options to fit your budget. Call today to set up your free exam and see how Embrace Orthodontics can transform your smile. More online at EmbraceMN.com. That's EmbraceMN.com. Wellia Health is here to keep you feeling your best so you can enjoy all the things you love best. You can count on us for your eye exams, mental health services, rehabilitation, wellness exams, urgent care, and much more. At Wellia Health, our goal is to help you live life well. 
Let Wellia Health help you get back to your best. Give us a call today to set up an appointment. 320-679-1313. WelliaHealth.org. Are you looking for a position where your role impacts the community around you? Then look no further than Burnett Dairy Cooperative in Grantsburg, Wisconsin. Owned by the farmers in your community, Burnett Dairy offers numerous career options with various responsibilities and growth opportunities. Positions such as CDL drivers, who work closely with our farmers, cheese production, creating award-winning cheeses, and retail store clerks making someone's day better. Visit BurnettDairy.com and click on Careers to join our heard. Everyone knows there are great places to play in northwestern Wisconsin, but did you know there are great places to work? Burnett Dairy Cooperative is just outside of Grantsburg, Wisconsin, and offers numerous career options with a wide variety of responsibilities, schedules, and growth opportunities. Some positions may include CDL driver, cheese production, and seasonal workers. Burnett Dairy Cooperative has competitive wages, 401k, profit sharing, and many other great benefits. Be part of our herd. Visit BurnettDairy.com and click on Careers. FM 100.9 WCMP. Andy Beckstrom on hand here with Lawrence Kluzacek after two periods of play. We're into the second intermission and Lauren, 4-3 to three is a uh, not exactly, you don't want to be on the losing side, but at the same time, you got to feel pretty good about where you're at. Yeah, uh, you know, when you consider two of the goals, one was scored, was it nine seconds in, and the other one, 34 seconds left in the period. You know, as a team, you know, you'd never want to give up goals that early or that late in the period. But, you know, the, the good thing was it was the second period, not the third. So we got another 17 minutes here where, you know, let's correct those things. And like uh, Coach Gross said, you know, watch the odd man rush that they were trying to break out on and and uh, play their game, and, and they'll be just fine. And a couple of those goals, Grabovel has had some moments where he has been absolutely tremendous and made some absolutely incredible saves tonight. But he's also had a couple of, I think two of those goals, maybe the first one and the last one, were not his finest opportunity, I guess, if, if you want to maybe phrase it that way. The other two goals were great A goals that yeah. there's nothing he could do about and it more of a defensive issue more than anything. But uh, I, I think of Grabovel, you know, kind of that stabilizing force. If he can play at the height of what he did during the first two periods, I think that they still got a chance oh, in this they, game. They, they definitely have a chance. And, and uh, you know, Jordan Grabovel, he's, he's going to come back strong and he's, you know, uh, He's probably upset at himself for letting a couple of those in. And, you know, those are just, just the bounces goalies have to have to face it. You know, the uh, some of these uh, all-pro NHL goaltenders, they say the, the best thing you can do is forget about what happened. Yep. Get the next save. Just make the next save, you know. Just move around and, forward. Uh, you know, if you let that thing bother you, you know, it, it could be trouble the rest of the period. So hopefully it, that's what the message is to him, just make the next save. Don't worry about what what's done. Four to three is the score. Very active period. Again, we talked about the goal scored nine seconds in. Thompson made it at the time two to one, and it was only one to one after the first period. Kind of a slow moving period. I had very almost nothing on my stat sheet, but that second period things really got ramped up. Penalty on Pine City. Monticello had an opportunity. Pine City killed it off. Pine City then scores a goal. Gross from Leisure at three thirty nine made it tied it to. That's when you start getting some of that momentum that Coach Gross was talking about. Monticello takes a penalty. Pine City scores just a few seconds later, technically on that penalty, but also technically on a delayed call. So they had the two-man advantage. Leisure gets that one from Bros, And now we're off to the races, 3-2 to two lead, and we're killing penalties. You start feeling good about life. At that point, things start to kind of come off the wheels just a little bit. Uh, uh, two back-to-back -back penalties on cross checks on Monticello. Uh, both of them were on Sybin, and Monticello killed both of them. And sometimes killing a penalty is just as good as scoring on a power play. And uh, they get an opportunity, you know, a few minutes later, Pine City takes the uh, interference penalty. They're able to kill that one off. They did actually have a fourth power play opportunity in that period, and Pine City killed off every single one of them. So you got to feel pretty good about that. But Monticello scores at 10-27, Sherber uh, on that one from McGriff. 
made it uh, three to three, and then O'Donnell on that kind of odd man rush, just kind of chopping at the puck, flipping it out in front and getting it past Gravavel, made it four to three. But uh, really, the the middle part of that that period, I don't want to say belonged to Pine City, but really it was controlled by Pine City. It was if you take away the goal, first minute, last minute, they have the lead yeah. three to two. And really, the the other goal that was scored at uh, five fifty or at uh, ten twenty seven was just a good two on one work yeah. by Monticello. Yeah, it, it was, and, and like T J. Gross, Coach Gross, elaborated, it was one of those they they caught the guys out playing open in the slot, and uh, you know they beat us two on one. Uh, you know there was another play earlier in the period, similar to the one they scored on, but Munson was able or Thurman was able to. It was a beautiful def- def- play to be able to get that. You know, so, I mean, there was a, some good defensive play by Pine City, too, that, um, you know, you could be looking, if, if, if that one connected, you know, we could be looking at 5-3 or, or, you know, but, again, Pine City's had some opportunities, too. So, uh, again, I'm just looking forward to this third period. It's <laughs> if, if Pine City gets the lead... Do they start taking penalties and just start being on the uh, penalty kill? Because they seem to be controlling the penalty <laughs> kill pretty good. <laughs> is that too far? Is that too much of a reach? <laughs> well, it's probably too much of a reach, but the way this game is going, maybe that might be their strength. But, uh, but no, it's, uh, they just got to take a deep breath and just play their game. And they, They've shown for two periods they can skate with this team like, Coach Sider said between the first and second period. They say they know they can skate with every team. The young guys at Pine City, the, the young sophomores and freshmen that they got skating, are doing a heck of a job for them tonight. They can continue that. The leadership that they have from their veterans here, um, anything can go. Now, if you kind of recall that game last year, the, the sectionals, Pine City had Monticello on their heels. If they can get them like that again, I've noticed two at Monticello, they're, they're used to playing maybe only a line, line and a half. But if they can wear that line and a half out, mm-hmm. if well, that's what Monticello does again. Um, of course, we didn't see it because they've been shorthanded most of the period. And really, three, technically four straight penalties taken by Monticello in that middle part when the Dragons started to really press and they got it tied and then they took yeah. the lead. That was really when Pine City started to control that game and the ice started to tilt just a little bit yeah. and Monticello started reaching. Yeah. So it, it's there, and it's that you're right. You're right on with it that they have that opportunity, to be able to you know take that opportunity and take that chance. So we'll see what they can come out with here for a third period type of fire. We'll have that for you when we return here to Pine City on FM 100.9 WCMP. Your journey to smile with your forever starts at Embrace Orthodontics. The team at Embrace is committed to providing world-class care and a remarkable orthodontic experience. Choose between custom light force braces or Invisalign clear aligners with locations in Pine City, Lindstrom, and Cambridge. And a plan to fit your budget, whether you have insurance or not. Embrace Orthodontics will make your smile journey comfortable, convenient, and customized just for you. Visit EmbraceMN.com today to find out how to set up your free exam. EmbraceMN.com. Embrace Orthodontics. A smile you will embrace forever. Hey, you looking for a reliable propane supplier? Look no further than Burnett Dairy Propane. Proud to serve you, providing top-notch propane services all year round. Offering convenient delivery options and flexible payment plans that suit your schedule and budget. Trust the experts in the field, Burnett Dairy Propane. Call them today at 715-689-1032 or visit them online at burnettdairy.com. Burnett Dairy Propane, your dependable propane partner. Oh man. Hinkley Collision. Hell no. My new car? Hinkley Collision is the right decision. Fender benders, major accident damage, or hail damage. Hinkley Collision is the right decision. With 24-7 towing and fast, friendly, professional service, their collision department will get you back on the road in no time. With decades of experience dealing with insurance carriers, make the call today. 320-384-7002. 320-384-7002. FM 100.9 WCMP. Andy Beckstrom on hand, along with Lauren Skuzacek here. 17 minutes up on the clock. Third period up and coming here in Pine City. 
Pine City girls basketball winning over the top of Hinkley Finlayson in other action tonight, 68-25. Ethan Game D. Gilman on the call for that one. But an opportunity for the Dragon boys hockey squad to be able to come away with a huge upset here in the early going of the season. As uh, they do trail 4-3, to three, but... They scored two goals in that last period, so it's not beyond the realm of possibility, this, and they this, have some explosiveness to work yeah, with. This is anybody's game yet. You know, one goal, you, you just, you know, you, the message of the Pine State is we're, we're one goal down, but we dominated most of that second period. It's here for us, guys. We just got to do it. We just got to play clean. We got to clean up the, the messes in front of the net. We can't allow the, the odd man breaks, you know, like Coach TJ said. And... For Monticello, they got to come back here and just say, hey, we got the lead. We can't let them get any momentum. And, you know, they got to try to get an early quick one to go up, too. So these first four or five minutes of this period is going to tell a lot how this game is going to end. Should be a very, very exciting first couple of minutes. We talked with uh, Coach Sauter after the first, and they were going to have to weather the storm that Monticello was going to come up with. Do you think Monticello tries to come out with that same fire right away here for the first couple of shifts? Yeah, I think they, they will. I think you'll see that. So, Well, we're underway. We'll find out here. Pine City maybe comes out with the same battle of their own as the puck comes out in front. And Brawls tried to backhand one in just a few seconds in, trying to do a reverse of the second period and try to get something going. Turned away by Blanick, and the puck comes back out to the neutral zone to come all the way back underneath. Panovich from his own end gets it back out to the neutral zone. Widmark tries to start it up the far side of the ice. Thompson had it knocked away from him by Berglund. Now the puck pushed over to the near side. Bros couldn't handle it. Back it'll come now. Thompson steps out in front. And that one slides by. I don't know if it was Thompson or if it was Simon. But again, another first period goal by Monticello. Uh, it looks like uh, 24 is leading the, the pack. So that would be uh, Simon that got it. But... It kind of looked like that was one that was thrown in front of the net, kind of like Ryberg school in the first period, kind of tapped it in underneath uh, grip ball there. So, again, you said we could see the first four minutes, we're going to kind of see how this game goes, and it's not uh, the start Pine City wanted. So 5-3 now the score. Sherber gets an assist as well as Thompson. The good thing for Pine City is, you know, they still got 16 minutes here to score a couple, and they showed they could score two goals in a period against this team. So, again, just got to play composed hockey here and, and get right back in it. Puck down into the Pine City Dragon end as Haug loses an edge, and the puck comes out in front. It was an opportunity for a second there for the Moose as the puck comes back, and Sent wide of the net now by Sybin. Puck over to the far side as the Moose trying to buzz here in the first period. Sybin, short side shot on the far side is turned away. Nelson tried to dig it out. Puck back up to the blue line now. Mick fires that one. That one's going to be deflected up into the netting back behind. Uh, up the stick of grip ball, so got the mark another save there for the senior net miner for the Dragons. 15-33 to go here in the hockey game. 5-3 is your score. Face off now on the near side left of Grabobble. Off the boards, back to the point. Mick tried to play that one back underneath. Gets by Ziegelmeyer, but he's able to gather it up. He's pushed up against the boards on the near side. Taken away now by Lazier, and it's taken away. Byer tried to get out in front, and Missed the net just a little bit wide. Gathered up by Stutzman on the far side. Now back to the point. Nelson steps down on it. He loses the puck, taken away by the Dragons. But their pass is taken away now again by the Moose. As every time the Dragons try to work up ice, the Moose are right there to be able to take it away at the blue line. That one came out in front. Ziegelmeyer almost got it past Grabovel, who is still following the puck going the wrong direction. As that one's cleared up into the stands, and it Lands in a group of students who are not looking at the puck. 
14-49 to go here in the second period. 5-3, the lead for the Moose. Got to give the Moose credit. I mean, they, they came out strong in this first period, and they haven't let up. Back out to the neutral zone. Dragons got it that far, but the Moose gather it up before the mid-stripe and toss it right back in. Back to the point on this near side. That shot's going to be deflected high up into the rafters. McGriff took the shot and deflected off of somebody. He wanted to hit one of the inside the zone. Big old metal girders up top. Draw in the zone. Draw one back by the Moose. Turning in his own zone. Now oh, Sherbert plays that one underneath. Thompson tried to step out in front. It was poked away from him by Berglund. Berglund trying to gather it up in the corner and start it out. Dragons try to center that one back out in front to start it out, but knocked away by the Moose. Try to get that one back now for Sherber. Back to the point. One-timer kind of taken. Well had it kind of roll off of his stick a little bit. Puck on the far side. Chipped along the boards, but taken away again by the Moose as they are just in all of the passing lanes as the Dragons try to get that puck back out of the zone. Played back underneath by McGriff on the near side. That one's back up to the point. McGriff again gloves that one down. Gets to the slot, trying to backhand that one in there. Valvoda able to knock that one away. That puck is now laid up ahead, and Agard will bring it back. Agard trying to make a move in the offensive zone. If nothing else, he's able to get all the way in and allow the Dragons to change. Brought back now by Thompson. Thompson has the puck knocked away from him. Over to the corner on the near side. Centering feet came all the way back up top. And a shot taken by O'Donnell. Save made by Grabavo. Five three year score with 13 23 to go. Fight City's playing a little tighter this third player period. They were kind of more loose in the first two periods, and it just seems like they hesitant to make mistakes or something. Well, and I almost wonder a little bit as it comes back now with Leisure. He tries to play that one out in front. Panda was just coming down the middle, but he puck knocked away by Blanick. But I almost wonder, you talked a little bit about uh, it, how the Moose like to try to go about a line and a half that uh, might be, I don't want to necessarily say conditioning, but they try to get buzzing out with that top line for the first handful of minutes and really just kind of short shift the second line in hopes that potentially you get that lead and then you can just kind of placate the rest of the period. Yeah. Dragons are trying to press or try to be able to do that. They almost have to just, like you said, weather that storm for the first minutes, first few minutes, let them tire out, and then they can really get after it with that second line and try to mix up the lines. Yeah, you know, and, and this is a game where goals can come in bunches too. So, I mean, 12 minutes to go, there's, there's still a lot of time. So, Back it'll come now. Agard loses the puck, but he dropped it right back. Beautiful opportunity there as the shot taken by Rydberg goes high and wide of the net. Puck near side in the corner. Agard in there trying to dig that one out. Came away with the puck momentarily. Now he's got it back behind. He's spun off the puck as it comes free now with Ryberg on the far side. Chipped along the boards, but kept in at the point. Sent back in now by Briar Baruby. Puck over to the near side in the corner. And it'll come all the way back through. Into the neutral zone, and the Dragons again come away with it. Bros comes right. right in, and Gavin Bros makes his case for coming back in this game. Again, that was uh, just kind of what Monticello did in the second period. He got the guy open there and, and hit him, and uh, Bros took care of the rest. Went right in and took the shot, beat the goaltender, and again, makes this a one goal game. Nice heads up play by the Dragons there. 5.06 to go here in the hockey game. And that's a huge goal because you want to get, obviously you want to get all the goals you can at, at every point, but the deeper you get into a hockey game that you have a two goal disadvantage, 
the more you start to press even more. And if you can get that goal a little bit earlier, you can start to kind of relax a little bit. I don't want to say like totally relax, but you can play a little looser now for a couple of shifts, be able to prevent that. I was just going to say, kind of withstand with what they're doing. And now the sixth goal put in on Grabovel, sent in by Sherber. And Sherber has been in and around every single goal scored. Yeah, that was uh, a meltdown in the Pine City's defense there because he was left wide open and just opened a, a shot and just beat her ball. So, again, not going to fault the goaltender on that one. Puck sent down the length of the ice. Grabovel lays that one down. Played around the boards over to the far side. Now chipped along the boards. And played up ahead by the Dragons. They come right back after it. That shot comes in and Blanick scoops that one up. 6-4 now the lead for the Moose as Dragons got that one goal and got it to a one goal game but now again it's still 11-11. Still a lot of time left to go yeah. but at the same time the point that I was just making now you have to start pressing a little bit more because it's still two goals. You can't wait to score two goals until the final minute. Puck up the far side. Brought all the way back in by Simon, And the Dragons quickly turn that one back into offense. Agard sends that one just wide of the blocker side of Blanick. Puck on that far side. Simon played it up against the boards. Trying to start it out ice along this near side. And will come all the way back through down the length of the ice with the Moose once again out in front. And a nice save that time as Simon came through Got it in the slot and just slid right through the crease. And great job by Grabovel to be able to turn that one away from Seidman. 10.22 to go. Two goal lead for the Moose. Puck taken away now by the Dragons. Panovich tried to play that one out in front for Burroughs, but it was deflected away and taken away by Levi Well. Really nice defensive play with the stick work there. As the puck comes back out through the center and now sent all the way deep into the zone and now we got a penalty coming well, got on Monticello. The penalty or was there an offside? Well, Grabovel was oh, okay, okay. I didn't running see to it. his net so I'm hoping there was a penalty. <laughs> <laughs> You're kind of in my view there so I didn't see that. <laughs> all I saw was a ref over here with his offside hand up. So, so this is... Uh, Good opportunity now for Pine City to catch it on this power play and make it back to one goal game. But. All right, so contact to the head, assessed to Levi Well, who just made that nice defensive play. He takes the penalty at 5.58 or 6.58, I should say. Now, TJ... During the intermission here, he said that the referees told the players beginning that anything high they were going to call. Uh, through their words, the refs have been calling that tonight. So kudos to the referees for backing what they say. Puck sent down the length of the ice. Under 100 seconds to go on the power play. Nine and a half to play in the hockey game. Kirby lays that one down, and it'll be Laser that'll start it out. Laser starts that one ahead, just tipped ahead by Brose, it'll go all the way deep into the zone, but the Dragons will have to try to chase in after it to gain possession. They pick it up in the corner and they'll start it on this near side. Back to the point it goes, Lazier tried to turn and play that one deep, but he played it right onto the stick of Cameron Schmitz. He's able to send that one down the length of the ice. Over to the far side now, Sherber in the corner. Pins it up against the boards, and that's all he wants to do is just pin it up against the boards and just not allow the Dragons to be able to do anything with it. Kill off that power play. And now it comes away ahead for Lazier. Lazier slides his way through the neutral zone. Over for Berglund. Berglund fires a shot just wide in the net. Panovich on the far side. Played that one underneath. Panovich got it right back from Lazier. Lazier from the corner. Tried to play that one back door. Puck up into the air. Berglund tried to slap it out of the air. Might have been with a high stick almost. And now we got some pushing and shoving up high after the play. See if they're going to call anything here. And I did see a hand up on the far side before all that, but I don't know if it was because of the played with a high stick or if there was a penalty on that. We'll have to wait and see here. Oh, 
going to be a minor to Cameron Schmitz. So and we got a roughing on Penovich for Pine City. So, so it's going to remain five on four. So a cross check on one and then a roughing minor. Panovich is going to get that one. Puck over to the far side in the corner now as the Dragons remain on the power play. Agar digs that one out in the corner. Looks back to the point, able to get it to Haug, who's able to hold the zone. His shot is deflected high up into the scoreboard back behind. He's got to be careful with that thing. They just got that. Yeah. Brand new. I don't want to say the Dragons have to score on this. There's only 15 seconds remaining on it, but it, it would really be helpful if yeah. they did because it is 8-16 remaining. You don't know how many opportunities like this you're going to get. Puck back to the point, Haug. Chips that one over to the far side. Now they go quick touch pass up top. Klein fires a shot. That's a save made, or Burby rather. Backhanded out in front by Valvoda and hit some traffic. And somehow the puck stayed out of the back of the net and it sent down the length of the ice. And now Burby's going to go to the box on a slash. So it's seven, that would be Ryberg, isn't it? Ryberg, correct, yeah, not nine. Again, that's what. So I didn't see it behind the play, but the official did. So now the fifth opportunity, and again, you just can't keep giving Monticello this many opportunities as the Dragons get it cleared out down the length of the ice to start things. And not only that, you're, you're two goals down, so you you got to be playing smart and got to watch those sticks and, and stuff. So Maybe S we can get a shorthanded goal here and get us back in it. And that's the tough part of it is now that it's, it's also two minutes where you're playing defensively. Bouncing puck gets back out to the neutral zone. You hope for an opportunity shorthanded, but really you almost got to assume that you're taking two minutes off the clock. Puck knocked away by Bros. He fires a shot. Save made. Blanick tried to knock it to the corner. Almost knocked it right to Bros. Monticello trying to work their way out of their own zone now. Thompson, he lost it. Sent back up ahead. Now it's picked up by Lazier. Lazier always explosive. And he has it. And there he gets it. He got his way into the circle and puts it high glove side. Knocked the water bottle off the net. And gets the shorty. And again, that's just good heads up play there by Lager. Didn't do nothing fancy. He just got the puck and rifled it and, uh, you know, beat the goaltender high. And, you know, right now, Pinesy's right back in it. They still got a minute two to kill on the penalty, but, uh, you know, we talked about maybe getting a shorthanded goal to get back in it. Mm -hmm. We accomplished that. Now let's just kill out the rest of this here. And, and, play a strong skating game like they did the first two periods. Monticello still remains on the power play for another minute. Valvoda completes a check on the far side and that allows Agar to be able to backhand that puck down the length of the ice. 45 seconds remain in the power play. The clock ticks down now closer to six and a half. Long lead pass along that far side brought in Seidman on the far side. Back up to the point as Widmark fires a shot. That hit a lot of traffic. Never made it all the way through. Far side now for Sybin. Sybin top now for Widmark. Back for Sybin. Top of the circle. Far side. He just steps up and snipes it. The official says no, no goal. goal. Sybin is beside himself. Monticello doesn't know what happened. I seen the officials say no goal, but I have no idea why it wasn't. But you want to talk about dodging bullets. I don't know what happened, and I don't know why. It, it seemed like when they, it hit the post and it came back, 
So I wonder if it didn't hit the post and then came back and hit Gravavo, but then everybody just stopped playing, assuming yeah. that it went in, and then it went in. So, but the thing about it is I never heard a whistle. I didn't hear a whistle either, but. So you know. I don't know why, it, what happened. And I, I, you know, trying to figure out the rest official, he pointed right down to the face-off circle, so I'm not sure. Trying to catch what they're saying there. Normally I'd be leaning out over the edge here trying to listen in a little bit, but with the music not, playing, I, I won't be able to hear anything. I'm not sure, but but I thought I heard him say something that the net was off. But I can't so imagine that, that Coach Eric Nelson of the Monticello Moose is, uh, he might be uh, kind of having a little bit of an out-of-body experience. Whatever it is, I... The, I, you know, obviously it happened way down there, and I don't know what exactly happened, but I, I got to believe that I got to trust the officials because they have been, in my opinion, pretty rock solid tonight with most everything that's happened. There's been a couple of penalties that you could make an argument one way or the other, but you're kind of going to have that. I thought they've been pretty rock solid tonight. So with that, I, I don't know, but <laughs> clearly there is a reason. <laughs> you know, the face-off's outside the zone, so again... Was this played with like a hand pass maybe? Or a high stick would have been face off all the way down. And now I think that Coach Nelson wants to maybe be able to get a change or be able to get the puck moved, the face off moved back in the, in the zone. <coughs> well, he's not gonna win the argument because it's back where it was, so. So 6.15 to go, 6.5, Monticello leads by one. Puck back out to the neutral zone. Now 15 seconds remain in the power play for the Moose. Their fifth opportunity is now Laser takes it away. Gets it back out to the neutral zone. Two on two, flipped over to the near side now as Bros brings it in. Fires that yeah. shot, and we're tied <laughs> shorthanded again. You know, you ask for one shorthanded goal and you get two. I mean... <laughs> And I even and that's a half I'm used, for Brawls here too. So. Is that a reverse uh, reverse broadcaster jinx when I say something that like you can't assume a, a shorthanded goal? You can't bank on that. Oh my goodness gracious! You want to talk about some chaos? I tell you, this game's had all the entertainment you could ask for. So fans are getting their money's worth tonight on this one. Early goals, late goals, shorthanded goals, hat tricks, controversial goals. So now I'd like to re reevaluate the comment that I made kind of in jest during the period break. If you're Pine City, you start taking penalties now. <laughs> <laughs> they scored two goals and killed off penalties. Better than they have all night long, even strength. Well, we'll have to ask Coach Sauter that one at the end of the game. <laughs> And of course, now we got a bunch of uh, nets there, uh, nets, uh, hats that are out on the ice, and uh, the players are going to go uh, try to clean those up and be able to throw them back over the top. Uh, assumedly, a lot of the uh, youth that were out here tonight for the hockey game playing uh, during the intermission break, uh, throwing their hats out. And a little bit of a distraction, but at the same time, you know, hey, that's a fun t opportunity to be able to do that on a night when you get a chance to come out to a game and now you see your team on home ice be able to take the number 10 team in state right to the brink. And yeah. you want to talk about right to the brink. We're tied at six with under six minutes to play. Tied six and coming from a two goal deficit shorthanded. We're back to even strength by the way and Monticello is 0 of 5 on the power play. But now if you're Pine City, I don't want to say you need to play conservative, but you have to make sure you that keep, you are locked in defensively. And, and you got to keep that gas, or put on the gas pedal right now. You can't slow down, let up at all. Puck sent down the length of the ice. It's going to come to the near side in the corner. Play it off now for Sherber. Sherber and Thompson have been in on everything that's happened for Monticello. That one flipped out in front and held on to by Grabovel. I think that was Brody Mick just trying to get a rebound opportunity, just trying to throw it out onto the doorstep, hoping for the best. Either you get a rebound or you get a face-off in the zone. Both things are good. Yeah. 
5.19 to play, 6-6 six, six your score. Shots on goal, 32-27 in favor of Monticello, but again, this third period, straight up even. Puck taken away. Rydberg gets back out to the neutral zone. Lost the puck, had it knocked away. Stepping up on it though. Great job there by Kirby. You gotta be able to feel when you have the opportunity to do that and when you need to stay back defensively. And Kirby, one of the captains, brilliant play being able to step up as a junior and be able to move that puck up into the offensive zone. And you gotta give some credit to the defense from Monticello there to tying up Agard. Couldn't have any opportunity to catch any pass. So. Puck ahead on the far side. Agard tries to backhand that one along. It's taken away instead by Stoll. Stoll plays that one up ahead. Brought in now by O'Donnell. Another shot comes through and another save by Grubobble. And a little bit of talking once again after the fact between Sybin and Milo Ryberg. Four thirty-six to play here in the game. Puck back behind Kirby. He looked to start it out. Laid up ahead now for Leisure. Leisure laid that one. Tried to drop that one for Bros, but it was a little bit behind him. Sent right back in by Monticello. Over it'll come now for Kirby on the near side. This one's going to be lifted by Berglund out to the neutral zone. Widmark there for it though. And it's going to be picked up by Leisure. Got it back to the neutral zone, but again, taken away by Simon. Now it's back to that bros Leisure line. Panovich comes in with them. Puck knocked away and taken away now by Schmitz. Laid up ahead on the far side. Simon will bring it in on the left wing. Simon gets back behind. Tried to play that one back out in front, but the only people there are wearing white sweaters. Schmitz up top. Spins around with that one. Now lays that one back underneath for the Moose in the corner. Kirby knocked off the puck. Kirby trying to play that one around. Puck over to the near side and flipped up and out of play as Bros tried to play that one off the boards and up ice and instead he played it up into the bench area. 3.33 to play in a six all game. We've seen 12 goals put in tonight there, Lauren. It's been quite the offensive night after a 1-1 start. <laughs> Uh, both teams, I mean, they're just, neither team is quitting, and it's kind of been a questionable hold there, but they're letting the see, kids there's play. A, there was a lot of uh, groans <laughs> coming from the, uh, the stands. It, it was questionable, but I don't know that he necessarily got him. I think it was more incidental, but you could definitely make that argument. Puck back up ahead now for Monticello. Puck goes back behind, chasing after that one, O'Donnell. O'Donnell back to the point. McGriff fires a shot. Now one's kicked to the corner. I may have just missed. I'm not sure if Grabavo got a piece of it or not. I think he got a piece of it, but I don't know if he saw it. That one's sent in from the point by Well and is tipped away. That one out in front, and again, Grabavo in the right position at the right time, able to knock that one down and get a hold of it. 2.52 to go. And now you start talking about do you put that second line out there, maybe get it close to two minutes, and then start using your timeout as almost a break to be able to keep that top line out yeah. there? One of these two teams, I think, is going to do that. Yeah. You're going to see it twice. The time's all taken. You know, Each team will utilize it. So, Leisure on the near side gets it ahead for Bros. Bros works his way in. Save made by Blanick. That was your opportunity right there. And Blanick comes up huge. In on the far side. Widmark at the point. Bouncing puck comes out in front. Thompson tries to swing it down. Between the legs. Backhanded shot. Ends up dribbling to the back side. And it's sent in by Gunnar Simon. Lance Sherber. Or Landon Sherber had it top of the circle on the near side. He didn't have a chance. He just tried to flip it backhanded between his legs. And that didn't necessarily work, but ultimately it ended up on the stick on the far side of Simon. You know, and Simon put himself in a perfect position there, too. I mean, he was left uncovered, so I believe Point City may be taking their time out. But and this is yeah. kind of what we talked about. This is more of <laughs> a situational timeout rather than rest, but this is kind of what we were talking about. 
but but Pine City, I mean, they, they did leave Simon left unattended there, and there was nothing Grimbaugh could do in that. So, again, a little little mental breakdown on the defensive unit there for Pine City there in that last goal. 7-6 now your lead for the Moose. Again, stick with us during the post game. We'll chat with the member of the coaching staff. Possibly get a player up here to be able to chat. Always tough in a game like this, it's so hard fought to be able to corral everybody, win or lose, be able to get somebody <laughs> to be able yeah, to chat because yeah. there's so many emotions going through this type of game. But now the question gets, how do you try to keep some of those emotions in check, trying to be able to settle everybody down? Okay, they scored a goal. That's fine. We've shown the proclivity to be able to score a couple of goals, even shorthanded. They got a new netminder in there. It's, uh, I had said uh, Blanick a couple of times, but it's Owen Soderholm that had come into that game. So new netminder at the other end after that last goal was scored. So really actually the shot that Bros had taken was on Soderholm. Do you start to kind of just have that conversation like, we're fine, it's okay. Let's try to press, let's try to get up ice, let's try to be able to play smart. You get a top defensive pairing on the backside, and then you just try to get something going offensively up ice. Yeah, and you know at Pine City, now knowing that there's a different goaltender coming in cold, you want to you want to test them too. Puck one back now by Hog. Two twenty-two to go here in the hockey game. Thurman has it taken away, and now the puck comes free for Monticello. But coming back out of it, Panovich is able to get that one working up ice. Gets that one ahead for Laser. Laser dumps that one deep into the zone. 2.06 to play here in the hockey game as they send it down the length of the ice. They waved off the icing, so the Pine City must have touched it. Puck on that far side and pinching in on that one. Now taken away out in front for Thompson, but he was tied up. Really nice play by Hunter Haug. Able to tie up Thompson in that high slot. That's that. We talked about some defensive breakdowns. That's the other side of that coin of a nice defensive play, not allowing to be able to get a clean shot on that. And the puck just dribbles harmlessly towards the netminder yeah. who's able to smother it. Face off on the far side, one back by the Dragons. Kirby will look to start it out of the far side. Panovich plays it off the boards over to the near side now. As we go under 100 seconds remaining in the hockey game, Kirby. Again, off the boards, but it's going to be played back into the Pine City zone once again. Now we start to keep an eye on Grabovel at the other end. Monticello is looking to try to be able to keep this puck in this end. They, are, they obviously want to score, but I think that they want to just keep it at that end to keep Grabovel on the eye in the ice. This one's going to be high up off the window. Nice glove knocked down by Kirby. He's able to keep it in. Extra attacker is on. Empty net at the other end of the ice. Laid out for a laser on the far side. Knocked away, Sieben gets it back out to the neutral zone. Battle for the puck as it comes free over to the near side. Laser tries to bring it back the other direction. Played that one up ahead for Agard. Agard all the way back behind. Out in front and got it for Laser, but he just couldn't get a good stick on it. Back to the point, kept in by Berglund. 45 seconds remaining. Berglund to the shot, lots of traffic and it goes wide. Backhanded along the boards on the near side. Kept in, though, by Lazier. His shot, save made. Agard on the doorstep. Has it deflected wide. Corner on the near side now with 30 seconds remaining. Kirby has his shot blocked, and it's going to go down the length of the ice. Ashton Stoll got the block on that one, and Kirby will have to come all the way back after it as it's knocked down on the far side. Now to, down to 18 seconds left to go. What more do they have in their legs? Dragons got to go quickly now. Up ahead it comes for Bros. Bros on the near side. Drops it for Laser. Laser had it with seven seconds, but he couldn't release his shot. Tied up into the corner. Three, two, one. What a game. And you want to talk about a game of inches. What a tremendous hockey game here tonight. Seven, six, your final score. But you can't hang your head at all. If you're a Dragon fan, the way they played tonight and the fight that they had, there is definitely some things to look forward to this season. Yeah, uh, you know, Pine City, they, no need to hang their head. They played a great game. I mean, you scored six goals against Monticello. Most of the time you're going to score six on Monticello, you're probably going to beat them. But, you know, Monticello, you know, give them credit. 
they kept pounding and kept pounding and kept pounding, and you know they they ended up with the one goal victory here tonight. And uh, again, Pine City, maybe this is a statement, and Monticello is going to be telling other teams, beware of that Pine City squad this year. They're, and they're, yeah, and the Pine City squad, they are no joke. They got uh, it, definitely two solid lines. You know, mix in, you know, a few other uh, young players, maybe be able to roll a little bit of a partial third line out there. Uh, two defensive pairings that I think are really, really good uh, back at the blue line. I think that they're a, a, a team to kind of be reckoned with this year. And, and they, they, you know, they did take five different penalties tonight. So I, I was going to say that they seem to be a little bit better about that. But the penalties that they've taken tonight – are against a really, really good squad, and some of them were kind of chippy, questionable penalties. So it wasn't, yeah. you know, far and away like they're getting into, you're mixing it up a little bit too much or doing things silly. There are not a lot of silly mistakes that were made. So definitely a much different Pine City team this year that, uh, you know, I, I think looks really good. Yeah, and, you know, the season's still young yet, so, I mean, they can build on this game, you know, and, uh Thursday night now they go down to Becker Big Lake they say hey we just had a great game against Monticello let's just go down and take care of business against Becker Big Lake and Saturday they'll have Mora here so again maybe a chance to get a back in the win column with a couple and and uh, you know get that feeling what it's like to win again instead of these these close losses but seven seven six your final score we'll come back here during the post game and wrap things up and Talk with a member of the coaching staff and possibly one of the Dragon players. We'll come back here on FM 100.9 WCMP. This can be the loneliest sound, and it's never the right time. Car in the ditch, you standing by the side of the road. Thank goodness Hinkley Towing is on the way. 24-hour service, experienced drivers, and state-of-the-art trucks. Put their number in your phone before you need it. Hinkley Towing, 320-385-4049, 320-385-4049. Hinkley Towing. Hi, I'm on the side of the highway with a flat. Can you help me? On the way. Hinkley Towing? Yep, how can we help? We just had an accident and don't know where to bring the vehicle. No sweat, we'll come out now and bring you back to our collision center. Hinkley Towing, experienced drivers, state-of-the-art trucks, and 24-7 service. For Hinkley Towing, call 320-385-4049 anytime. Hinkley Towing, 320-385-4049 anytime. Are you interested in a technical degree that can quickly help you land your dream career? Or maybe you've always dreamed of going to a four-year college, but you'd like to start close to home. Either way, Pine Technical and Community College has you covered. PTCC offers more than 50 degrees in hot fields like healthcare information technology, advanced manufacturing, and business. PTCC is now accepting applications. Financial aid may be available online at pine.edu. Starting out or starting over, find your future at Pine Technical and Community College. Kettle River Pizza is a proud supporter of sports teams and community organizations. Local groups and teams across the state have had amazing success with Kettle River Pizza fundraising. From sausage and pepperoni to chicken alfredo or the hot Hawaiian, the cheesy deliciousness practically sells itself. Visit KettleRiverPizza.com to schedule your next fundraiser. It's so easy to get started. Got a pizza craving now? Pick up a Kettle River Pizza at your local grocery store or convenience store today. FM 100.9 WCMP, Andy Beckstrom on hand here. Back in Pine City, Pine City Civic Center, a 7-6 final as the Monticello Moose top the Pine City Dragons. Joined by Coach Souter here during the uh, post game. And uh, uh, Coach, uh, a, uh, a tough loss, a hard-fought loss. Uh, what are your, I guess, kind of just first impressions of the third period and then the game as a whole? Well, first off, couldn't be more proud of the boys. Um, we had a couple guys banged up. One, one of our uh, core forwards left halfway through the game with a pretty significant injury, and you know the next guy came up and, and did their job. Like I said, couldn't be more proud of them. In a wild second and third period, there we did, I thought we did a pretty good job of keeping our composure and sticking to our game plan. You talk about uh, being proud of them. Uh, what it, what is the feeling like for you to uh, be kind of on a bench and you see the way that they play? They they end up taking the penalty that. You, whatever you want to feel about the penalty, but they come right back and they're like, you know what, we're not going to let that bother you. We're going to score two shorthanded goals during it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we talk about perseverance a lot and adversity. You know, we always tell the boys that adversity reveals true character. And, yeah, down nothing. We don't care if we're shorthanded or 
power play, even strength, whatever it is, um, you know, the boys are focused on doing their job. And, yeah, we were definitely able to execute on those shorties. That was great. Could you uh, sense the uh, confidence building in the locker room and on the bench uh, really through that second and into that third period? You talked a little bit about you know, some possible nerves before the game, but uh, it seemed like there was no nerves out there at all as the game wore along. Well, yeah, especially for our, our young guys, you know, our, our white line is made up of all sophomores. So, yeah, you could see it with some of those guys gripping their sticks a little, a little tight to begin there. But um, once once they got a period under their belt, I think that all just faded away. And, um, yeah, they fit right in. They were doing a great job. So, um, and, again, our returners that we've had, you know, we played Monticello tough three times last year. Um, so they were already feeling confident. But, yeah, to get those younger players to build that confidence and have this experience was, uh, was a great uh, – a great boost moving forward. I don't know if you necessarily got any type of explanation. It was a, a kind of a call that definitely benefited the Pine City side, but the goal that was uh, disallowed or not allowed on this side, what did you see or what did you hear on that? Yeah, I didn't get an explanation, but I was assuming they had a guy in the crease. I know uh, Oscar was pretty backed up. He wasn't able to come out and challenge that shot. So, um, yeah, I thought it was a good call. The refs addressed it and called it. Yeah, it seemed like uh, they were kind of on top of They tried to communicate with, you know, a lot of different uh, situations tonight. So, uh, yeah, we didn't hear what was was up here, but they waved it off immediately. And, you know, so uh, a 7-6 loss, again, a very tough game. But, uh, you know, what, what's going to be the message in the locker room kind of to move forward, you know, like you still want to be confident. It's still a loss, but you still want to be confident about, you know, what you accomplished tonight. Yeah, a lot of great things that come out of this game. You know, we're going to watch film tomorrow and uh – well, we got morning practice. That we'll be back here in about seven hours. But uh, <laughs> uh, after that, after school, we're gonna watch some film and look at the good, look at the not so good, and uh, moving forward. Like I said, we've we've been in every game we've played this year. Uh, we could easily be four zero. You know, unfortunately, we're not right now. And that's the message we've been sending to the to the boys is, you know, we got to learn how to finish. And again, with a lot of young kids, you know, they're, they're just getting used to the speed of high school hockey. Um, they're doing great, and I think this is gonna, definitely going to benefit us uh, down as the season progresses. So. Well, Coach, I uh, appreciate you joining up to us up here during the uh, post game, and uh, you know, congratulations on a well-fought game. Uh, unfortunately, coming up just a little bit short. Thanks, Andy. We'll come back. We'll wrap things up here on the post game here from Pine City on WCMP. There has never been a better time to sell your home. Get a fast cash offer today and have your money in as little as seven days. Any house, any condition. They will make you an offer the same day and pay you in as little as seven days. City lots, lake lots, land, does not matter. They want to buy it. If you are ready to sell your home, let Haley Newman with Keller Williams Premier Realty get you a fast cash offer or help get you into the home of your dreams today. Contact her at 320-469-6868. Joe and the gang at Roddy Motors say, Go Mustangs! Well, of course, he's got two boys on the varsity squad. He's born and raised in Mustang country, voted Reader's Choice Best Dealer in Connecticut County. Two years in a row, that's what you call a repeat champ. And he offers vehicles of all makes and models, can get you financed on site, and put you and your new vehicle before the Mustangs take on next week's opponent. When you need a quality new vehicle, make your way to Roddy Motors in Mora, or visit RoddyMotors.com. Kettle River Pizza loves supporting all the local teams. And if your team is interested in fundraising, well, they've got you covered. Kettle River Pizza has years of experience in fundraising for local teams, organizations, and clubs, and they would like to help you too. With their experience and the fact that Kettle River Pizza is an easy sell, your fundraiser is bound to be a great success. Visit Kettle River Pizza online and click on their fundraising tab. Kettle River Pizza, a winner every time. Grab a few at your local convenience or grocery store for after the game. Arrowhead Transit plays a pivotal role in bolstering the communities it serves. By providing accessible and reliable transportation, they ensure essential travel for work, education, and health care. Arrowhead Transit is customer-centric, continuously evolving to meet the needs of the community with initiatives like community outreach programs, job fairs, and educational workshops, and more. Arrowhead Transit is more than just a transportation service. It is a vital part of the communities it supports. Your connection. Your community. Arrowhead Transit your ride. Aw, oh, man. 
Hinkley Collision. Hell no. My new car? Hinkley Collision is the right decision. Fender benders, major accident damage, or hail damage. Hinkley Collision is the right decision. With 24-7 towing and fast, friendly, professional service, their collision department will get you back on the road in no time. With decades of experience dealing with insurance carriers, make the call today. 320-384-7002. 320-384-7002. FM 100.9 WCMP, Andy Beckstrom on hand. Back here during the post game, wrapping things up, a 7-6 victory by the Monticello Moose over the top of the Pine City Dragons here. Uh, joined by uh, the uh, Dragon player of the game, Gavin Bros, a uh, hat trick on the night. First of all, congratulations on that. And, Thank uh, you. Uh, what was that kind of feeling like? Did you kind of feel like that was in the cards or just kind of play and see what happens? <laughs> I knew it was possible. We just needed to keep shooting the puck on this goalie. He gave out a lot of rebounds and stuff and just needed to keep keep crashing the net did, did it seem like I, and I mentioned this earlier with with Lauren it, it didn't necessarily seem I don't want to say lost that's not the right word but it seemed like he was trying to find the puck rather than like playing the puck is that kind of what you guys seen on that yeah. side or is it I think he was maybe struggling a little bit to pick up the pucks coming from like the corners and stuff and like I know the one Milo scored his first goal he shot it from behind behind the net he was out of his crease he was so lost but yeah what, how did the game kind of flow feel? Uh, you know, you guys gave up the early goal and then were able to battle back. Gave up another early goal in the second period, but able to battle back. How was it for you? Yeah, we just needed to keep the boys positive on the bench, don't hang their heads. And we, we knew we could stay with them. We just needed to keep battling, getting it deep, just doing the little things right. And just in our defensive zone, it was just some little uh, out of placement where they capitalized on us. But work on it tomorrow morning and get back at it on Thursday. So. What, what was the feeling on the bench after the couple of shorthanded goals? <laughs> uh, we were pretty buzzing. We were we were pretty jacked up, ready to go out there and hopefully pump in another one. We just needed to play more defense and do those little things right. It's tough to have a loss, especially against a team when you have an opportunity like this against a team this good. But is there still kind of the feeling in the locker room by you, maybe some of the you know other players that you know still an amount of pride of like we're right there. You had yeah. that opportunity. Yeah, we. I think next game that we play, we'll be ready and we'll make sure we don't do those little things wrong and hopefully come out with a victory. Well, we appreciate you joining us here during the postgame. Gavin Braz with the hat trick tonight. 7-6, your final score. We'll come back and wrap things up on the postgame. We return on WCMP. Embrace Orthodontics offers a unique specialized approach to orthodontic treatment with custom braces or Invisalign. The team at Embrace loves getting to know their patients personally and takes the time to make sure all your questions are answered. Their board certified orthodontists use only the latest in modern technology to give you the best outcome possible. They work with your insurance company and offer flexible financing options to fit your budget. Call today to set up your free exam and see how Embrace Orthodontics can transform your smile. More online at EmbraceMN.com. That's EmbraceMN.com. FM 100.9 WCMP. Andy Beckstrom on hand with Lawrence Luzacek here. Wrapping things up on a 7-6 game. And uh, uh, you, you said it uh, just before we came back, but I'll, I'll let you say the exact same thing you just said <laughs> there a moment ago because I thought it, it's so poignant for the way the game went. <laughs> I, I, you never like losing. Uh, and but when you lose a game like this, you can still feel good about it because of things that that had happened during the course of the game. And uh, like I said, they had Monticello kind of on the ropes all night long. Uh, they went toe to toe with them basically. They they found themselves with two goals down in the third period, and then ended up scoring two on one shorthanded or one penalty kill. Uh, so. There's just a lot of lot of good little things that you can take out of this game and say, hey, uh, like Seth Sutter said, we're resilient. We're not going to give up. We're going to keep fighting. And, and, you know, I think in the last three, four years, we haven't seen that out of this Pine City team. They definitely uh, it did. There was no hanging their head at all during the course of this game. There was maybe kind of for a second kind of like a, oh, okay next play and just kind of a, a factor of moving on and moving forward which was uh, very nice to be able to see and you know whether it's you know the, the the leaders that are on this team or you know some of the youth that's coming through just kind of 
changing, you know, a little bit of that and just having that is, is kind of, you know, fun to be able to see the way they're playing right now. And, you know, you can expect some big things out of this squad for sure. Yeah, as long as they, they you know, keep putting in the hard work and they, they keep working hard during these games, I mean, they're going to win a bunch of games this year. They're probably going to win some games that they're not supposed to win, mm -hmm. you know. And, uh, you know, but that that's the great part about games like this. It's uh, any given day. And you talk a little bit about games you shouldn't win. If you play hard like this all the time, you're going to have some games that they've already had a couple of games that maybe they could or should have won that they didn't win. And so you got to figure the law of averages. They're going to be able to get you know a couple of games maybe that uh, you know maybe they they catch a team off or whatever if they can keep playing like this and keep buzzing. But uh, you know you got to be proud about uh, the way that they're playing. You know some pretty uh, solid a uh, couple of solid lines and uh, being able to kind of make some stuff happen even when their back is against the wall down two goals to a team that's ranked highly in the state. Yeah, and you know a, a team that you see very often in the state hockey tournament too. So I mean it's you, you take all those things. It's like we're right there with these teams. So uh, the thing is you, you lose by one, you still put what was the final shots? It was something like thirty four to. 28 or something like that yeah and arguably the two shots didn't go up there so 34 to 30 so you're yeah. really even if not ahead on shots on goal yeah so i mean you know everything that happened in this game i mean was this great offensively you know a couple little miscues on the defensive side uh they had some big saves by Gribble tonight you know they, they you know kept the game from being you know blown out and like uh gavin said that their goalie looked like he was reaching, like you've kind of pointed out, you know, and, and they kind of took advantage of some of that, too. So, again, it just you kind of had everything here tonight and, you know, a, a great entertaining game to watch. And, unfortunately, Pine City was on the shorter end of it. But, again, nothing to hang their heads on. And that's that's one of the big keys, too, is, you know, like you you, you got to still be, you know, proud of that. There's obviously things that you're going to see on tape. You're going to be able to look at it, and then Coach Sauter alluded to, that's what they're going to work on right away tomorrow morning. There's things that they have to work on, but at the same time, there's still a heck of a lot of things that they can really be proud of oh, yeah. what they did tonight. You know, most teams are going to score six goals on Monticello. They're going to win, mm -hmm. you know, and <laughs> that's just, you know, common. And what Monticello is going to have to take out of this game here, too, is like we're probably going to see Pine City two more times maybe this year, you know, so they're not going to be a pushover. They're going to be our little pest, so. Again, that's probably a good role for Pine City to be and be that little pesky team that everybody's got to got to face this year. Well, and that's sometimes you know an an enviable position, you know that you know you you can't just you can't just roll in here and get a victory. You got to go out and you got to force your way into getting it because it's not going to be given no. at all. So, I, I think that the the Dragons got you know definitely a, a bright uh, bright shiny type of season upcoming that's uh, within their grasp if they can uh, go out and get it. So. It'll be a, a fun fun season to be able to watch. So my first opportunity to be able to see him, but uh, definitely not my last uh, opportunity to be able to see him as uh, we'll be here for uh, pretty much all the home games and uh, try to be able to bring pretty much everything we can to you here on WCMP. So, uh, Lauren, I want to thank you for joining me out here at the ballpark. And uh, I want to thank uh, Ethan for getting me on back at the studio control. I want to thank all of our sponsors for jumping on board throughout the course of the ball game, And, of course, you, our loyal listening audience, for sticking with us throughout the course of a 7-6 loss by the Dragons. Close game, heck of a game against one of the top teams in state. My name is Andy Beckstrom for the Q Media Sports team, and until next time, have a good night, everybody. Wellia Health is here to keep you feeling your best so you can enjoy all the things you love best. You can count on us for your eye exams, mental health services, rehabilitation, wellness exams, urgent care, and much more. At Wellia Health, our goal is to help you live life well. Let Wellia Health help you get back to your best. Give us a call today to set up an appointment. 320-679-1313. WelliaHealth.org. Are you looking for a position where your role impacts the community around you? Then look no further than Burnett Dairy Cooperative in Grantsburg, Wisconsin. Owned by the farmers in your community, Burnett Dairy offers numerous career options with various responsibilities and growth opportunities. Positions such as CDL drivers, who work closely with our farmers, cheese production, creating award-winning cheeses, and retail store clerks making someone's day better. Visit BurnettDairy.com and click on Careers to join our heard.
Everyone knows there are great places to play in northwestern Wisconsin, but did you know there are great places to work? Burnett Dairy Cooperative is just outside of Grantsburg, Wisconsin, and offers numerous career options with a wide variety of responsibilities, schedules, and growth opportunities. Some positions may include CDL driver, cheese production, and seasonal workers. Burnett Dairy Cooperative has competitive wages, 401k, profit sharing, and many other great benefits. Be part of our herd. Visit BurnettDairy.com and click on Careers. Your journey to smile with your forever starts at Embrace Orthodontics. The team at Embrace is committed to providing world-class care and a remarkable orthodontic experience. Choose between custom light force braces or Invisalign clear aligners with locations in Pine City, Lindstrom, and Cambridge. And a plan to fit your budget, whether you have insurance or not. Embrace Orthodontics will make your smile journey comfortable, convenient, and customized just for you. Visit EmbraceMN.com today to find out how to set up your free exam. EmbraceMN.com. Embrace Orthodontics. A smile you will embrace forever. Hey, you looking for a reliable propane supplier? Look no further than Burnett Dairy Propane. Proud to serve you, providing top-notch propane services all year round. Offering convenient delivery options and flexible payment plans that suit your schedule and budget. Trust the experts in the field, Burnett Dairy Propane. Call them today at 715-689-1032 or visit them online at burnettdairy.com. Burnett Dairy Propane, your dependable propane partner. Oh man. Hinkley Collision. Hell no. My new car? Hinkley Collision is the right decision. Fender benders, major accident damage, or hail damage. Hinkley Collision is the right decision. With 24-7 towing and fast, friendly, professional service, their collision department will get you back on the road in no time. With decades of experience dealing with insurance carriers, make the call today. 